Excuse me. Too I fart? came. Yes, I did. It's gonna be bad. Okay. Excuse me. So I moved to LA with the intention of staying, and it was during that time that I auditioned for Super Fun Night. So I took the class as I was waiting uh, to find out about that audition, and then I didn't end up shooting it until later. That's the chronology. That's interesting. So, uh, and how many years was that? Boom, boom. The cans. Uh, what can I get you to drink? I have milkshakes, lemonade, bottled water, goat's milk, cappuccinos, um, and chocolate milk. <laughs> Just water would be great. great. I was really wanting to see where this was going to go. How far the list goes, how deep. Oh, oh my, oh my. I feel like I'm like sick in bed. This is something you want to put the yeah. There you go. Sure. Oh, this is wow. Okay, I shouldn't. Put, I feel like no. Please. Oh, okay, great. Please. If it's on the brown, it works. <laughs> uh, oh, this is nice. I feel like I could just lay back like a grandpa and take a nap. Why a grandpa? Is that what grandpas do? Grandpa's or? nap, Rick. Grandpa's and me. Oh, hey. Going. All right. Let's get this over with. <laughs> <laughs> Theme music. Scoot doo. Blabbery blue. Scoot dee. Oh yeah. You want to start? Yep. Now we have blankets. Welcome, Rick. Thank you. So great to have you here. I um, am wearing um, what's the what's the the palette called? Not pastels. Is it pastels? That's a pastel. Yeah, but but I meant to be all in the in the pink hue. Uh, sure. Out of respect for for my hair for your hair. That's yeah. really nice. Thank you for that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think that you're kind of those pants are almost like I think they're gray, but they almost if you blur your eyes, they're like a lavender. They are lavender. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, maybe you just can't tell. Um, here, let's color correct. You see it now? I see it now. Yeah. yeah. It's just hard because of the, the studio lights. Of course. Uh, I also am wearing pink out of respect to women because there's something that I've been kind of like really appreciating more so than ever recently. Okay. And that's the power of uh, a woman. Of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, every, we all come from women. Yeah. Right. And on them. Well, depends on the woman. But if yeah. there is a consent, then that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Or if you're feeling good. I mean, again, it feels like it should be a consensual thing, but yes, yeah, well, yeah. I, now, to for that to happen, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff has to happen before that. For example, she has to take me out, she has to buy me dinner, she has to rub my feet, et cetera. Of course, but I, I know your type. At that point, at that point, um, the consent isn't about the sex because you are already having it. Okay. The consent would then be where that happens. Correct. So. So how how would you want that? If if you're already consenting to you rubbing his feet, you're taking him out to dinner, you know, you're talking about how funny his stand up is. Of course. Uh you're getting him hard, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> trust me, Rick. I get it. Yeah, yeah. And then um you guys are having a good time and he's still figuring out your body. He, right. You know, he's it's fine. It takes a few times. Yeah. Um, and he's not insecure about it. He likes to communicate and ask questions. That's great. But now you guys have found a pocket and things are going good. And uh, you said, I, I love your I am phenomenal sketch. And now he's about to go. Please don't call my vagina a pocket, by the way. But keep please, okay. keep going. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what does he do? Does he say, how does he ask consent? <clears throat> well, I think it depends because now you've you've painted a little bit more of the picture now. Mm. Because now you're saying go, that this go, is go, like go, a go. few times in. Let's say it's the second time in. And the first time that didn't happen, he just blasted inside of you. <laughs> <laughs> This episode is sponsored by FitBod. And if you are looking to take your workout to the next level, check out FitBod. There's no better time to level up your fitness habit. Try FitBod today. Get, I thought it was going to be 10%, 25%? Get 25% off your subscription or try the app free at fitbod.me slash Tyso. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash Tyso. This episode of Take Your Shoes Off is sponsored by BetterHelp. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, try BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Tyso for 10% off your first month. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Tyso. <laughs> I think that what's nice is 
uh, is just saying, uh, I'm close. Do you mind if I... Where would you like me to finish? Right. That's what I think is the appropriate way of wording it. I'm close. Where would you like me to finish merch will be available at <laughs> laurenash.com. Listen, I mean, later on, if you're in a relationship with the person, then I think it all kind of changes, right? But I'm saying if this is a first or second time you're hooking up with someone, and, I think it's polite. And when you when the man asks, where would you like me to finish? The, right. girl, the girl will usually say something like, I don't know what you're backing me into here. I just think women are powerful. <laughs> it depends on the woman. I couldn't begin to speculate. Well, give me some examples. <laughs> <laughs> what I like is this is what we're coming out the gate with. Yeah, well, it, that did happen organically. You know what it did, and that's what's always nice about it, mm -hmm. because I don't trust any jokes that have, you know, non-organic fertilizers. I'll tell you something. Uh, any, uh, my jokes, much like any produce I have that I eat the skin on, I prefer it to be organic. I believe that of you. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that product that they used to sell called Fit, I believe? Or was this a Canada only thing? Is that something that you spray your produce with? You spray it with it to, to take the chemicals off. But it says you can't drink it. Right. Yeah. And I, then, I don't know if it was called Fit. May, I believe you, but I, that stuff does exist here. Okay. Yeah. That felt odd to me. Yeah. I was like, I don't know that we should be coating our produce in things that require another chemical to take it off. It would be like, you can't eat shit unless you dip it in bleach first. <laughs> yeah. Which is what they do say. They do say that if you don't want to get a tapeworm. If you don't want to get a tapeworm. Dip it in bleach. Dip it in bleach. Also at laurenash.com. Yeah, I'm a, I'm an organic baby. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, now that I'm a, a, a dramatic award-winning actor, as well as working on some other stuff, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know the show. I've heard of it. And um, put the thumbnail. Uh, <laughs> my lifestyle hasn't changed much. Right. I'm still a humble baby. Sure. But I do eat a lot different now. Do you? Oh, yeah. What's the biggest change? I used to cook. I used to cook all the time. I hear that. Yeah. Um, now I, I play my favorite video game of Postmates. Yeah. And I shop at Air One. And I've never done it. I've never crossed over. I live in Van Nuys. Yeah. I got to keep it real. You know what I yeah. mean? I can't be driving to an Air One, but I guess I could Postmates from there. Yeah. You could also drive there. It's not very far. Mm. The thing is... um. They have a, uh, what got me hooked onto Air One was a dried mango they have. I'm going to give a plug. Mm -hmm. It's called Go Man Go. That's. But there's a space after the first go. Not after the man. What does that say? Go Mango. Yeah, but they do it. I think it's done in a way where it says Go Man Go. I don't feel like with National Women's History Month. Let me see. You want me to be closer? No, I'm, I'm I mean. Oh, you're getting the package. I thought there was a note about my mic placement. I don't know that with International History Month, uh, I mean, Women's History Month being so recent that this is the kind of thing we need to be promoting. I mean, we started this episode by talking about how no, powerful women are. No, but I think it's important that, I, listen, I'm going to say something that's going to probably turn a lot of my audience, especially my male audience off. But I, I don't, I can't say I don't care. I do, but it's not, I'm going to do it anyway. It's not just about recognizing how special women are and lifting women up and saying these things to women mm -hmm. and women empowering women, which is important. This is important to teach our sons um, what that means and what that looks like. Huh. And when you have men that support women, this is going to sound so tacky, but when you have men that support people and women are people, sure. then go man, go. <laughs> That's go man, go. The softest organic mango that you will find that doesn't have additives. It's wow. Consi you, ever, you, you eat dried mango, right? I have. It's a little hard. I've dabbled. Sometimes it's soft enough. I don't love it. Would you try a piece? You want me to right now? Okay. I'll make it fast because, listen, I ate on my podcast once, and let me tell oh, you, no, the, no, no. The, we, 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 the hell, the hell that was rained down on me, that's looking, okay. Um, you know, this kind of looks like rawhide, like for a dog. Is so, this a bit like, is no, this a prank? Like no. you start by empowering me as a woman and then you, the joke is I fed her dog food. <laughs> no, like, not at all. Also, a, don't chew into the mic. I would have said that anyway. Oh. Maybe that's a harder piece. It's pretty hard. You know what though? It's good. It's real good. It's good. I'm going to save this. I'm going to save it on my phone for later. Sure. Right so there. Uh, I would go there because this is where I found it. Uh, Whole Foods has it now too. But now I just go there and I go twice a week, uh, maybe three times a week to pick up a ba bag of mangoes. And then while I'm there, I'll get some. Uh, the only stuff I really get there besides my 
my dried mango is fresh produce mm -hmm. as well as their hot bar. But that's not why we're here. It's not why we're here. Please don't refer to my vagina as a hot bar. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but they do have very good hot pockets. Hot pockets. You should know that that's like how my brain works is like everything that you say to me makes me think of a song or a line from a movie. And most of the time I don't say it out loud. Right. Well, here's your opportunity. But there you go. Yeah. I was referencing a pocket because you were also said not to refer to your vagina as Shirley. I liked that yeah. very much. Good. Thank you. So let's meet you. Okay. All right. We met on a television show. Why don't you tell the audience how this works? Absolutely. How this interview works or mm -hmm. how? Okay, great. So what's going to happen is this. Rick's going to ask me a little bit of backstory about me. We're probably going to meander. The conversation is probably going to go on some like kooky left-hand turns. That's my hope. Uh, but eventually we'll get it back. We'll tell some stories, do some bits, and then we'll get out of here. Yeah. So you were uh, born in Canada. <laughs> I was. I What's was born like? in Canada. Cold. Um, it's uh, it's beautiful. Mm. It's a beautiful place. I've been. Have you, where have you been? Jeez, I've been to Montreal five times. I've been to Vancouver a few times. I was in, uh, um, what's the place north to north of Washington? Uh, Victoria. Wow. Did you know that I believe that you've been to Montreal five times because you said it correctly? Uh, and so what do other people say? Montreal? <laughs> they go, Montreal. And how did I say it? Montreal. I don't. It's almost like a U, and that is how we say it. Montreal. Montreal. I wonder if I said it correctly because I just got lucky, or because I've been there. Maybe it's because you've got a Canadian in your ether, and just by like osmosis. Please don't refer to my asshole as my ether. I'm so sorry. Uh, yes, but or of course, or my poop is osmosis. Put it in bleach. Get your t-shirts. Uh, I. Uh, you can also call it Montreal. Uh, Montreal. 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 Do you speak any French? We. Oui. Oh. We don't here on the podcast, no. Mm, that's a shame. Do you? Uh, un petit peu. Yeah. Et rue saint mm, Oui, oui, monsieur. Monsanto. Monsanto. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's why I said ne encontre. Ah, oui, 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 oui. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I prefer pea protein. So. Who doesn't? You were born in Canada. Yeah. So you probably looked up to the SCTV gods, right? Of course. Kids in the Hall. Um. Who are your favorites? Well, Kids in the Hall was was definitely like appointment viewing for my mom and I when I was probably far too young to be watching sketch comedy. Appointment viewing, meaning it's on at 8 p.m. We watch it at 8 p.m. Thursdays at 8. We're watching it Thursdays at 8. Yeah. Thursdays at 8. Thursdays at 8. Um, I knew that. Uh, I know that you meant that because you said 8 right. Thank you so much. Well, you didn't. Well. Thursdays at 8. Thanks so much. Thanks for pointing out my foibles. Uh, yeah, I, I loved... I mean, I loved all of those people, all of the SCTV cast, all of the Kids in the Hall cast. I mean, when I was uh, cast on Superstore, I was the first person cast. It doesn't matter, but Google it. It's true. That's cool. I think that matters. Why do you speak down on yourself? Were you embarrassed about uh, bragging that you were the first cast? Because that doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It kind of matters. It doesn't matter. What does matter is, is that Mark McKinney was cast next, who, of course, is from the Kids in the Hall. And when I told my mother that, that it was like I'd won an Oscar. Like it was right. like the kids in the hall are royalty Been back there. home. So yeah. You know, I was nominated for one of those, didn't win. Oh. Um oh. yeah. Six years. You were nominated six years? No, just six years, one nomination. Would have been nice to win. The point is, it's I'm glad that you have one. Thank you. For both of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you were the first cast on your last show, Superstore yeah. on NBC. <laughs> and I was uh, the last cast. And you're the last on cast <laughs> on Not Dead Yet, yeah. ABC. Correct. What do you think that means? Be mean and keep them keen. You know, like ABC knows what's up. It's like, don't give her too much. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that happened the other way for me. I was uh, on my first NBC show. I was the sixth lead. Mm. Um, another award winning series. Oh, there's uh, just so many. It's, there are. It's so many around you. There's more. Yeah. Um, Great. But uh, and then my next show, um, as we see it, I was the first lead. Right. And uh, and now this show, uh, not dead yet. I'm the fourth. So, it really, it just it really humbles you, doesn't it? <laughs> first cast, last cast, first lead, sixth lead. Yeah. What's it like being a woman? Um, it's not great. Tell me the bad things. <laughs> Tell me the bad things. Ah, uh, you know, I think probably like. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. I think uh, just, you know, probably the fact that your your body is such a conversation for yeah. everyone. Give me some examples. In the micro and in the macro. Give me some examples. 
Well, there, I, I don't know if you know this, but there's been some changes that have happened in this country over the last little while that have been a little controversial in terms of women's rights. But in the micro, uh, you know, it's like, I think that people really think that they have kind of uh, ownership because of the, ma- the, the, the macro kind of subconsciously people, feeds the micro. The patriarchy? The, yeah, the macro being the pa- patriarchy has has so programmed. So men are macro and women are micro. Didn't say that. That was not okay. what I, that's not what I, no, I think that there's two macros. And um, yeah, but I think that it, it programs men and, and people and women mm-hmm. and all, all genders uh, into thinking that they have the, the right to comment on other women's bodies. And the only thing I comment on on a woman's body is when I think it fucking looks awesome. And that's why I'm glad I could say to myself <laughs> when I look in the mirror, go man, go. Yeah. You know, I feel like this is this episode. It feels like I might have to do some heavy lifting. Like, I think maybe by the by the end of this, we'll come to something. This is going to be a very special episode of Take Your Shoes Off. You know what I mean? I, it seems like you heard the impression that on this podcast, we really get to the bottom line. I had when I had Zuckerberg on, we t- definitely talked about his feelings there. of getting rid of the the yeah, before Facebook. Of course, that must have been tough for him. Um, no, but this I don't think of this podcast usually as an interview podcast. It's a conversation podcast. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's nice. But I can interview you. No, I don't, I don't want to be interviewed. I've actually gotten really good at interviewing. Not have ironically. you? Yeah. yeah, I have too. Yeah? Yeah. I don't even, uh, our, uh, my podcast, it's, we don't have guests, but somehow I've gotten good at interviewing. Huh. Yeah. Huh. 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 Hmm. Huh. I'm going to interview you. Okay. We're in Canada. Um, now, I know you're not supposed to ask a woman's weight, but you could ask her age. <laughs> I'm guessing you were born in 97. Oh, that's very kind. That's very kind. He doesn't mean that. Um, 1897. Hello, you fucking old bitch. See, that's how it just comes back around. <laughs> no, but you, uh, you, you I, I'll speak for myself. Sure. I felt very connected to you on set of our so show. So did I. Because you are, I'm going to, I'm going to refer to you as a bit queen. Is that fair? That's more than fair. Yeah. Yep. Um, and uh, daddy's attracted to a bit queen. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> when there's somebody doing this, I'm going to step in and be like, yep. what are we, what are the, what games are we playing? Yeah. I noticed that happened. There was one, I think it was our first day on set. And then it was just like out of the corner of my eye. It was like, you slowly kind of just edged into my frame of view and it was on. When I hear, when I he- feel, when I feel that kind of play happening, yeah. I literally like, it would be the equivalent of if you're hungry and something smells good. Yep. Like I'm, I'm like, what's, what's happening? And, Am I going to be able to play with these people? You were like a cartoon bear and I was like a pie that got sat on a windowsill. We'll animate it. Thank you so much. Yep. Fun podcast, right? (laughs) I love it. Sometimes we call it a pie cast. A pie cast. Yeah. It should be. But I'm going to do serious interviews now. Okay, great. Um, so you always knew you wanted to be a comedian. I did. I, do you want to know the, the exact story, the exact moment? Yeah. Great. I was hoping you'd say yes. I was seven, and uh, because I'm a little older than Rick initially joked. Oh, so this was uh, in 2004? I was, uh, no, it was not. It was earlier than that. I think we're the same exact age. You're 22? Yeah. Yes. So it was my grandparents' 40th wedding anniversary and they rented a video camera. We didn't have, this was like, mm-hmm. we also didn't have a lot of money. So other people owned them at the time. I wasn't born in the 70s, but you know, it was close enough. Right. Uh, you were poor? Mm, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really likable. Like audiences like to see somebody who was poor and now is oh. uh, the, the last cast on an ABC show <laughs> mid-season. <laughs> <laughs> Who's really barely scraping by <laughs> with those dreams. Uh, yeah, no, it was a humble. It was a humble start for me for mm-hmm. sure. Um, but... I was a painfully shy child and this video camera came into this party and I was just, I changed immediately. Like I, all I wanted was to be on again. the- you, The mustache was put on you. I changed immediately. Okay. And all I wanted to do was be in front of that camera. And I, it was literally like my entire family was like, she barely spoke until now, you know? Was that once once you saw what the camera could do? Like you nope. watch video? So uh, something was pointed at you and you're like, I'm in. Yep. I was like, wait a second. So it's a camera. I knew, I under- obviously I wasn't, you know, I wasn't dumb. Like I knew what a camera, I knew what a camera was, but I was like, oh, so it's not a still photo. I'm moving. Right. And that was it. I started doing impressions. I, again, my mother was like, you were a changed child. What it impressions was, do you have? Uh, well, at that time it was Robin Leach. I did a, I did a play on 
lifestyles of the rich and famous, but instead I did lifestyles of the poor and boring, which I think as a seven year old is a pretty good bit. Yeah, I think right? it's a great bit now. Thanks. I think that'd be a great thing to do to go around and just go to poor, boring people's homes. Yeah. They don't have to be boring. No. But poor. Sure. So poor. Yeah, yeah. 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 And just like, this is uh, it's my fridge. <laughs> I mean, it still could be lifestyles of the, well, you know what it could be is lifestyles of the number four and the number six. Yeah. You but, know, but, like but, people who are on TV, but you know, we're not saying rich and famous. That's Method Man and Red Man did that. Um, oh. Well, not that, but... uh. I liked uh, my favorite episode was Red Man and Method Man. Oh, the dirty ass house, Dude, the dirty ass it was like uh, a townhouse house apartment. <laughs> oh yeah, that's my cousin right there. He, you know, he he be knocked out over here. You know, they were successful, uh, and people assume that if you're a famous person that you're loaded, but they just had like a regular place, right? And then they didn't make it look great. It was for cribs. Right. And they didn't make it look really special. It was just like some place. And people thought it was a joke. But it was like, no, this is where we live. Well, I heard that there was like, wasn't there a scandal that Cribs people were like renting houses? That it, Sometimes it wasn't even really their house. Cribs of the 90s and early 2000s is to what um, filters uh, are now, where people are thinking this is what we're how we're supposed to live. This right. is what we're supposed to be. Right. Isn't that sad? Yeah. Yeah. I actually have a... A, a, a strong point of view mm -hmm. on how much I I hate, how much I think it, how inefficient and bad filters are. How much work are you getting done? Me? Yeah. What do you mean? Nothing. You are you, you botoxing? Are you filling? Are you doing any of that? No, not yet. Oh, okay, that's um, nature's filter. Yeah, and that's also <clears throat> that's also uh, what you look like. Like wow, I, deep. I think it's. I think if you're. I think if you're going to have cosmetic surgery and you want to change the way you look, then change the way you look. Um, but if, I mean, if you're pretending, I see what you're saying. I got gotcha. you. Um, yeah, I, I, and it doesn't bother me as much. Like there are some filters that it says, like on TikTok, it'll say what the filter is. Yes, it doesn't bother me as much. It's yeah. almost like credit your source. Right. You know? it's a bibliography. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good yeah. word. Thank you. Uh, one of the few. Uh, words that start with bib that actually are like, oh, that's fair. Like bibbly boobity, you know, it just sounds like a kitty word. Bibbity bobbity boo type thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you knew you wanted to be a ham. Yeah. Uh, at seven. Yeah. And then also, uh, and we could edit this out if you want, is the story that you told me in the car the other day? We, I can't talk about that. You can't talk about that. Not yet. No. Well, when you can. Yeah. Maybe wild story. Yeah. And if you want to hear more, check out my Patreon at <laughs> patreon.com slash take your shoes off. Oh, God. He's really going to rope me into doing this. Okay. Um, uh, what made me want to think of it? Because there's something connected. Oh, yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, how does somebody who at seven thinks, who lives in Canada, mm -hmm. thinks, oh, I want to do this, end up being in the big city of Hollywood doing it? Well, I'll go. Th I'll try and go through it quickly. Thank you. You're welcome. I then became obsessed with wanting to go to theater school. I got a go, full go, scholarship go. to go to theater school. I dropped out of theater school after three months because I hated it. But hold on. How do you get a scholarship to drama school? Well, I got a scholarship to any school I wanted to go to. How does that happen? I was a really good student. Yeah? Really good. And I was really about like, um, I would like organize events and stuff like that at school. Like I was... I was also, I was like, you know, I was, I was high school valedictorian. I was best all around student. Like that's, that's kind of what I'm bringing. Was you being something that helped too? Like, mm. is that something Canada does? Like she doesn't have that much money and she uh, organizes lunches at the school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but this one wasn't actually based on financial need. And it you, was. And any school you want? Any college I wanted to. So in Canada, we have universities and we have colleges. And I know that here it's like you call it all colleges or community right. colleges. So colleges are are the smaller version? Yes, but they're not. But we have community colleges too. So it's kind of like there's so many tiers. It's confusing. But Is it yes. like the American League and the National League? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't get used to scholarship for universities. I couldn't. This specific scholarship, I couldn't. Now, are there any prestigious colleges in Canada? There are. There are a few. Yeah. And I, the program that I was going to was a very prestigious acting program. Very Ooh, prestigious. I could tell because yeah. it's, you said it prestigious. Prestigious. And very so, prestigious. So you got this thing and you're like, fuck it. I'm going to go to drama school. Yeah. Okay. And I, but one of the rules about keeping the scholarship was that you had to keep your grades at a certain level. And this theater school, which will remain unnamed because it's gotten into some hot water for their antics. 
Uh, that's not a bit. They really did. They would not grade anybody above a C. It was like you were going to get a C, a D, or an F. Well, but but then it's impossible to maintain anything Correct. above. Correct. But did you know that before you went? I did not. So they said, welcome to orientation. I want you to know 100% means a C. Correct. And so then that was part of part of the... Is that their uh, effort to let actors know to, to get used to rejection? I think that was part of it. There, the whole program was like built to, to kill. Like it was built to kill spirits. Basically, it was like we were pulling without exaggeration. We were pulling 60 to 80 hour weeks and then being assigned all kinds of homework, which you couldn't physically do. There wasn't enough time in the week if you wanted to sleep. And so it just broke people. Like people just started having like emotional meltdowns and mental meltdowns. I it's actually to, not funny at all. I went to Juilliard. And, <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it's, uh, there is a thing where they, this idea to break you is almost like some part of what they teach. Yeah. But it isn't the lifestyle. Right. Because it doesn't foster creativity. Right. As a Juilliard graduate. Yeah. Uh, I know this. I just didn't see it. Like you have so many things. I just would have thought you would have had your Juilliard, like your diploma or I have whatever. I in my office. I could show you. Oh, okay, great. Uh, I'll actually put up a picture of it now. Okay, great. So you can see. Sure. Um, and it's not a diploma. It's a plaque they give you. Oh, hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Sounds very reputable. So, so you now you're getting straight C's with your 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, if even, because there's not enough time. Correct. And then you go, I'm out. Yeah, it just was starting to like, I was starting to question whether I should even do it. One of the notes I got was, um, were you raised by a single father? And I said, no. And they were like, because you come off like someone who was raised by an unfeeling man who never combed your hair. That was the note I got on a scene study that was completely benign. Like that's, there was That's a person, not a college. <laughs> but it was across the board. The faculty, everyone in the faculty had their own way in, but there that was kind of the general vibe. I um auditioned for the groundlings sure. years ago. Uh and to go in to, before you get to take classes, you you go in for an audition yep. and during the roll call they were taking people's headshots and is such and such here, is such and such here. And during that uh, I was uh, talking to the person behind me. Um, I only remember it the way I remember it then, so I'm sure I was louder than I remember. But sure. I do know in my head, I wasn't even feeling that silly. It was just like, you know, it's roll call. It's not time to pay attention yet. Um, and the 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 person who was teaching the class at the time, uh, and I remember his name. I know I know 40 names total, from <laughs> including family. I know this one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he said, "Get out!" To me and the other person. And I had been wanting to, the Groundlings, this is the Groundlings, I want to yeah. go here. And, and I said, I, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, could you please, I, I, and he goes, out. Uh, and I go, okay. And we walk out and as, I, as I'm leaving, I hear him say, aren't you glad people like that aren't going to be in class with you? And I went and I talked to the, I went across the street and I talked to the office and they said, we'll look into it. And then I called back uh, and they said, we have to take the teachers, what he says. And I wasn't allowed to take classes. And so then I went to UCB for a while. And yeah. then years later, I'm like, I want to go to Groundlings. I just want to do it. And I signed up with a different name uh, in the audition. Like, great. And they get to take the class. And then when I did the class. I used my credit card. My credit card has my name on it. And they had it a record. And they, they said, you can't do this. They blacklisted me. And uh, my friend, Tony Cavaliero. Do you know Tony? Not personally, but uh, I know the name. He was on the main company for a while. Um, I apologize if you still are, Tony. I don't think he is. Uh, I don't think he's doing groundlings anymore, but um, he said there's like five people blacklisted on the groundlings. And, and you're I'm, one, I'm of, one them. of them. <laughs> and it's, and you could bleep the name. It's that fucking uh, guy who didn't work there like eight months after the fact, but they're like, hey, this is what it is. And then you tried to sneak in. And that was his first name? That was his last name. What's his first name? Uh, uh, only because you don't know. Well, you can tell me afterwards or whatever. Only because I had a terrible experience auditioning for the Groundlings. And that was his name? His, I don't know what his last name was. What was I, his first name? <laughs> Figures. Did you go to Groundlings? No. So I, listen, I'm skipping ahead in my chronology, but mm -hmm. long story short, spoiler alert. Thank you very much. When I dropped out of school, I went and auditioned for Second City. Or I, sorry, I signed up for classes. In Canada. In Canada. 
And then I got- That's what people do. Then they move to Chicago, right? Yes. So I did, I got cast. I was the youngest woman ever cast to the touring company in Canada. And now you're the oldest woman. I'm not dead yet. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I really, no, I'm not the oldest, but I'm the second oldest. Uh, Who's the oldest? Angela. I thought she was in her early 30s. Stop. She's stunning. It's the promo. It's the premise of the of the character. I thought she was just playing older. Oh, sure, sure. Prosthetics. Yeah. Listen, um, I'm wearing prosthetics now. I'm actually uh, I'm nine. <laughs> anyway, I uh, so I got cast as in the touring company. I did that for a long time. Then I did the main stage in Toronto, and then I did the main stage in Chicago. Now I'm I'm only one of four Canadians that have done both both main stages. Quit bragging. This is merch that I've made. <laughs> uh, and but anyway, that is all relevant because. I moved to LA right. after having done all of this. And right. I thought, you know what? I should I should audition and try and work my way up at the ground links. Nothing wrong with starting at level one. You're in a new place. Exactly. And so I went to the audition and for context, and I say this with kindness, there was a gentleman in this audition who did not speak English. Mm -hmm. English was not only not his first language, it wasn't any of his languages. Mm -hmm. he, he did not know the language. There was another person who- To be fair- in something like that, you really only need to understand the language of comedy. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, and then there was another person in there who seemed like perhaps was having a mental health uh, episode. Or <laughs> issue. It was me. It was you. <laughs> like, I thought I was fine. <laughs> that would be amazing if it was like I've blocked the memory of the faces. But anyway, so we do this whole audition and we do all these things that, by the way, I have been doing at this point for, oh my God, nine years professionally. Mm -hmm. And the feedback that I got was... Did you grow up with a single father? I, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's something to Is this. Is there something to... I, I mean, I, I didn't. I mean, that's the joke. Uh, I grew up with a single mother. So again, I don't know. But uh, the feedback I got was, you seem to have a real um, background in long form and that's not what we do here. So you're going to need to... Uh, you're going to need to trash that if you expect to do well here. And I'm like, that guy doesn't speak English. And you're giving me... And yeah. He didn't get it. You know what he got? No notes. No, no, it's, oh, you're riding me harder because I'm good at this and a woman. Well, I may have added that part. Yeah. Uh, no, but it, it turned me off completely. Yeah. I never I never went back because I was like, this is ridiculous. Like, you don't have to make an example out of me to the room. Like, stop it. Everybody yeah. here was like, clearly this woman has done this as a profession. When you find people that are in, I mean, I'm sure this, this goes outside of this business, but I'll speak specifically in this business. Uh, and this business, I'll even go s narrower, comedy. Sure. When you find people that maybe aren't doing what they want to be doing, mm -hmm. it's almost cartoonish yes. how much they project. Yes. And yes. it's also making me think, this is not to the point I just said, but excuse me. there's an episode this season of American Idol where there's this girl who was singing and she was, she was great. Uh, she was very theatrical and... Uh, um, American Idol, they try and, you know, they have a whole bunch of different kinds of artists, but they're, they're, they are looking for, uh, admittingly, like a pop kind of vibe. Sure. Sometimes it's country, sometimes it's a little indie, but that's like what the show was built on. And sometimes they're like, oh, there's something good in there, but it's too theater, it's too broad. And I get how that could be a thing. Right. Um, but also this person's thing was that was their style. I mean, yes, I right. can see that as theatrical, but like it's, it's brilliant, you know, I mean, Sarah Bareilles is, could do all of it. And uh, they were like, Katy Perry in particular was like, we need to get that out of you. You need to not do that. And it's like, I get that as a note to kind of be aware of, but they were like, it made me think of that. I, it was just my reaction to like, don't do this. Don't do this. And yeah. it's like, I guess that's a fine exercise. What point are you trying to make? Especially on these people who are so young and impressionable and in this yeah. thing with you where you're like, oh, this thing that I do, which by the way, my perspective was fantastic. Right. Uh, she, she's long form? Yeah, okay. I mean, okay, okay. Then we'll just have to do that in three minutes. Right. Also, guy... <laughs> I shouldn't be disparaging his name publicly. Uh, bleep, bleep it out. Bleep, bleep it out. Bleep when she said the name, but what, but I didn't say his name, so it's okay. Great. Well, it also just sounds like you're saying, hey like, guy. hey, dude. Yeah, yeah, that's what I am saying, because I'm Great. not saying his name. Great. Bleep when I said the last name, bleep her saying the first name, but yep. keep all of these in. You, you suck. You know? Oh, is this too long for him? I'll heighten it faster. 
Yeah, it's like again, like you better get that out of your system. Like what? Like are you kidding me? We're ma- we're gold, ma- gold, we're gold. adults playing make believe. We are adults doing make em ups. Like I understand that there's different schools of thought and there's things that you can do or whatever. And listen, I'm somebody who actually likes improv. I know a lot of people hate it, but I was just like, this is not. We're not. Come on, come on. You're an adult man. You're an adult man, sir. Grow mm-hmm. up. So what happened? You left that too? You, like we were, everything we else, were briefly quit? married. We were briefly married. Uh-huh. He and I, uh, no, I'm kidding. I, I actually took stand up classes because I had done so much sketch and improv that I was like, maybe I should try a different modality in the comedy world. A lot of big words. And thank you very much. Very well read for someone who doesn't have a college education. Uh, I got a word today, calendar. Point is, I, uh, I started taking stand up classes and. Um, do you no, remember who taught you? I do, but who? I don't. I was hoping you wouldn't ask. I don't remember her last name. I'll find it. What's her first name? I I don't know if I remember that. <laughs> okay. What made you want to lie about that? What made, like you why like I called you out. I wasn't meaning to call you out, but because I had a good experience, so I was like, oh, I don't want to bring right. her up if whatever. But then, but watches. then when you, but well, who knows? But even then, when you said further, I was like, wait a second, do I know her name? I'm not good with names either. I never forget a face, but I'll always forget a name. Oh, I'll forget a face first. If I if I if I use your name to your face, mm-hmm. that's a compliment. Because that means I really know you. You know my name. Yeah. All right. I'm not going to ask. I'm sure don't, you know. We don't need it. But if I did ask, you would know what to say? Of course. Great. So uh, I took a stand-up class. That's how I started. Is it? Yeah. I took three. It was three weekends of classes. And then the fourth weekend, we did a show. Yeah. So this was kind of like that, actually. Where was it? We did classes at... The Ha Ha Cafe in North Hollywood. Is that where you did it? No. I did it in Cleveland. I'm just guessing. Oh, gotcha. No. I think it was at the the Improv. Mm. Yeah, but uh, we did our big show. Cut to a clip. Thank you very much. Do you have vi- video? I don't know if I do. I'll look and see. I don't think I do, though. Well, if not, but I'll cut to some ads. Cut to some ads. Uh, you guys make me feel free! No! No! Lauren, give me one sec. I'm sorry. I just got to talk about this new app and this new sponsor that we have for this podcast, FitBod. So for those of you that have seen the I Am Phenomenal video, <laughs> full screen, <laughs> swiped away. You know, I'm a very athletic boy, but the thing is I've had some injuries and I've had to relearn different exercises. I get a little uninspired because like, well, what am I supposed to be doing? What am I allowed to be doing? What exercises did I forget that I should be re-implementing? Cause you don't want to do the same stuff all the time. So I was approached by FitBod and I was like, what is this? So I downloaded it to use it and it's awesome. My favorite thing of it is it shows all the workouts, but it also shows videos to make sure you know what you're doing and what you're targeting. Just pick a fitness goal, select your equipment, and FitBod will create a custom workout program for you. Whether you work out at a gym or if you work out at home in your living room, FitBod will create a custom program for you. Learn new movements the right way with over 1,400 demonstration videos, and a full year of FitBod is less than the cost of a single session with a personal trainer. There's no better time to level up your fitness habit. Try FitBod today. Get 25% off your subscription or try the app free at fitbod.me slash Tyso. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash Tyso. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. I like therapy. I can't imagine this is your first episode because this is one of the most popular podcasts. But I talk about therapy all the time, not just going to therapy, but thinking about therapy, thinking about the tools that I've learned in therapy, thinking about how to execute those tools, how to better communicate, how to better be understood. So if Victoria had a secret and I was holding that secret and that secret was about therapy being very beneficial, guess what, Victoria? The secret's out. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Tyso for 10% off your first month. Listen, if you have been thinking about therapy and don't know where to begin, this is a very, very convenient way to get set up. Go to BetterHelp.com, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash Tyso for 10% off your first month. Hey everybody, comedian Maz Jobrani here. I just wanna thank Rick Glassman and his fans, the Goblins, because I tell you, I reached out to him, I said, listen, Rick, I'm a fan of the show, take your shoes off, which I guess makes me a Goblin as well. And I said, I got this new comedy special that's out, I'd love to come on the show, talk about it. He goes, sure, we'll get you on, but before we get you on, do a video so I can tell my fans about it, they can check out the special, then you come on, we talk about it. Who does that? I'll tell you who does that, Rick Glassman, because he's a gentleman. So I'm here to tell you, the special is called The Birds and the Bees. It's on YouTube. Check it out. It's free. Did I mention? It's free. 
Check it out, and I can't wait to be on the podcast because I've never done a podcast without shoes. So I'm really excited. Rick Glassman, thank you. Goblins, thank you. Birds and the Bees, check it out. Mazio Brani, bye. We're back. Did you like it? Yeah, and we're back. And we're back. Yeah. Again, it's always, it's a constant uh, ticker tape in that brain of mine. Um, So, yeah, so we did the show and there was all these scouts like looking for people and they picked no, everyone. There, there was, and they picked everybody. <laughs> Everybody but me. What, and I was like, I was what really scouts, funny. What does scouts mean? Like they had little pencils? <laughs> there was literally like bookers from like the comedy store and stuff like that. And and a lot of people got asked from that class. And a lot of them were very funny. Some of them, they weren't. Mm -hmm. And I was None definitely, I'm not saying I was the funniest, but I was definitely in the top 10%. Nobody, never got asked. Nobody who's taking a comedy, which by the way, I'm not knocking comedy class. I think it's great. It's great. To, you could learn something. Also, it forces you to be accountable to you saying, I'm going to get up on stage. That'll make you get up on stage. Right. I think it's great. I will also say nobody who is taking a comedy class is good. And sure. not yet at, at stand up. Sure. You need to be doing it for years and years Absolutely. and years. Absolutely. So the fact that bookers, it was sold as bookers are coming. Yes. You were lied to. Oh, interesting. But then these people did do shows. Like I saw the shows. Yeah, there were shows somewhere. But they, at the comedy store. Yeah, there's, there's, but there's, you're saying there are shows at, at all the clubs that aren't booked by the I club. See, They're I just see. bringer shows or which there's nothing wrong with doing shows that, you know, hustling and doing a type of shows, but to be sold that there's going to be book, it would be the equivalent of, of, of you, uh, Never having done anything before. Right. And then doing like going, taking an improv class for, by the way, three weeks and then saying, all right, Lauren Michaels is coming. The, you know, uh, uh, scouts from CAA and WME and ICM. Are, it's like, no, they're not. Why wow. would they ever go to this thing? Right. This is, these That's are people That's what I that was asking at the time. Not real. What, you know, what's amazing Everyone's is that this is 10 years. This is literally a decade of time. And you, uh, I wish I'd known this then because I took it so personally. I was it, like, how am I not good enough for the for these these people? I guess it's because I don't fully understand stand-up and then I stopped doing it. I would love if you, you found some notes on the <laughs> table that said she, something about her shines. It just seems like she was raised by a single father. Um, you know, there's an interesting, interesting <laughs> perspective that I've had for years now, and I, I, I and I use it as a tool. Like it's it's almost intuitive for me now that I even said it when I was talking about remembering the groundlings. The way we remember things, not only has so much time had passed, yeah. and not only if it's something we've thought about before, we literally are remembering the memory of the memory of the memory, like yes. in the game of telephone. Yep. We're also at its root, best case scenario, remembering something through the eyes of somebody who doesn't have the perspectives we have today. Correct. So like when I remember stuff that happened in high school and the way I felt like with my tumultuous, tumultuous, how do you say, it? you know, big words? Tumultuous. Tumultuous relationship with my brother, as brothers do. That was from me as a kid seeing it. And now as an adult to think it's the same way. So like to remember the way I remember it is so much just a feeling and not the way it was. Yeah. So like you need maybe, I mean, one needs to add in today's perspective, which you don't think to do because I remember it then. Right. But like to kind of re-see stuff and like, yeah, that idea to like, you know how this business works. First of all, scouts don't come to anything. And if they do, they're coming to see a particular person or at Montreal showcase that yes. is like this big thing. Yes. But like the idea that like to remember, fuck, no scout ever wanted me. Scout? Scout? Who's going to that? Yeah. You at know? five o'clock on a Tuesday. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to go see people that have been doing stand-up for three weeks to see <laughs> if, I could give them the, if, the, if I could give them their big break. <laughs> well, what's amazing is, is that I've gone on to have consistent work in, in television ever since, like within a very short amount of time of that. I was on a show. What show? So, a uh, super fun night. It was my first show I did. It was also for ABC. How long after you moved here did that happen? I technically kind of moved here for the show. Oh, you auditioned in so Canada. So, I auditioned in Canada. We booked the pilot. And then I think... No, you know what? Excuse me. I fart? came... Yes, I did. It's going to be bad. Okay. Excuse me. So, I moved to LA with the intention of staying. And it was during that time that I auditioned for super fun night. So I took the class as I was waiting uh, to find out about that audition. And then I didn't end up shooting it until later. That's the chronology. That's interesting. So, uh, and how many years was that? Uh, that show ran one, only one season. How <clears> many <throat> episodes? Uh, thir 17. Did you make decent money? No, terrible money. Got a terrible deal. Terrible deal. It was a network deal. show though, right? Network show, they, what they paid me was alarmingly low. Um, we could bleep it. Was it below 15? 
that's a lot of money for a first job still. Here's what the problem was, is that I didn't realize that I should, it was a tax issue. So I got taxed as a person as opposed to something else. As opposed to a corporation. Correct. Why did you not want to say corporation? Because I feel like it sounds douchey. I mean, all you've been talking about is how you make your own merch. This and this is actually available. Women this is in the do. store for people, not women, for people. That's important to um, recognize that women are people. You're thank right. you so much for that. Uh, but yeah, no, it was that I paid so much money in tax and I had to pay for my green card. And anyway, I walked right. away from that show in like it, it, the money was all gone and I was not living like a, you know, crazy Hollywood life. Or anything like you like are that. now? Like I am not now, but I don't know that I ever would. And how long until uh, Superstore after that? It was, I think, a full year. Damn. So you've just been working. You just, I've always worked since always before worked, you moved yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like a working actor? Yeah, I do. For sure. And there was a year and a half after Superstore ended. I was six on. Six years. That was six years. It was six years. And then I was on an overall deal with them. So I was uh, developing my own show, which did not get chosen. Uh, it's fine. Um, the booker, the, the scouts didn't like it. Um, uh, the comedy club scouts. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. A, uh, I but you get know, everything. Yeah, I know. The point is, I actually, so I wasn't acting for a year and a half. And I'm sure you were. <laughs> well, <laughs> sure. But I, I started to have like severe heart palpitations to the point that I thought I was having a heart attack one night and literally called an ambulance. Panic attacks. Well, at the time I was like, because I have generalized anxiety disorder. I live with, I live in anxiety. I know it's pretty obvious. I live in anxiety. So the EMTs come to my house and they're like, you're having a panic attack. And I was like, this is not that because I'm very familiar with panic attacks. And anxiety Even that attack. felt like a, like a sketch character. <laughs> no no way. Way. Have a mustache on. <laughs> um, and he's like, no, you, you are just yeah. having a panic attack. You're not having a heart attack. How did the EMT and discover that so quickly? What was he able to check? He hooked me up to the EKG. Yeah. And he's like, no, you're not in the range. Like you're not. So he just saw your heart was actually fine right and then but i didn't believe him so i got a referral to a cardiologist and got all these different tests done some of which by the way are very uncomfortable if you are a woman that's if, on theme if we're doing an improv show i run across the edit and i come out okay so miss paparu it seems like your heart is okay now you grew up with a single father <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> well played Thank well you. played but yeah so i got all these tests done uh with a cardiologist and it came back and he was like you have the heart of a younger woman you your heart is perfect and I was there's like, only been four people to ever have a heart as yeah good as yours. this is so <laughs> weird and then i got a phone call offering me a small job just a just a small like you know guest star role and i was like sure i'll do it and i hung up and i started uncontrollably sobbing and I was like, what's going on? And then I was like, oh, you you missed performing. Was it I didn't realize that this whole time it was that I hadn't been working for a year and a half and it was having a like a mental and emotional a, a impact on me that I didn't even realize was happening. They're not mutually exclusive, but two things there. You had commented on I'm not performing anymore. Was it that or was it not having the security or uh, uh, just wor being worried about money and survival and will I work again? Which one was it? Because you could perform on your own without making money, you know, yes. doing shows and stuff. I think it was a little of both. I mean, I was still making money on the deal that I was on. So it wasn't that I was like totally scared. I think it was that concept of like, oh God, what if it goes away forever? And then it is, of course, a concern about your livelihood. But then it was also like, I just really miss it. And I really love writing. I'm always writing. But I, what it made me realize was that it was like, oh, I don't think that I could, I could do one or the other. Like, I think I have to always be doing this as well this is performing yeah explain how the overall deal happened um so i wrote an episode of superstore in season three mm -hmm. and it and was you weren't on the writing step so you just asked the sh them said hey could i write an episode yes and like, i i did provide a sample and i did i came back from winter break early and i was in the writer's room like i helped break the story like i was mm -hmm. there for all the steps um which i loved i loved that whole process but then yeah towards the end of the run of the show um, I had actually been kind of like campaigning to be a producer because uh, some of the other actors on the show were producers on the show. Uh, they told me no, but when the show ended, they were like, do you want this? And so I said, okay, I'll well, how, do that. How many years was the deal for? One year. Um, we could bleep the number. Will you tell me what it was? Do you not like to talk about that stuff? The money? Yeah. I honestly would have to look it up. I don't remember. Was it significant? No. Uh, yes. Yes. Was it as much as I would make on a show as an actor? No. But more than an episode fee. Of course. Right. Um, so that money that you had wasn't life-changing money. No. Uh, and it, it also doesn't, it's only one year and it doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to have a job from it. 
Right. And I think what was tough for me was that I like really put my kind of entire soul because it was the only thing I had going on into this script that I really loved. So then that you wanted to develop that with, I really wanted universal. Was it? Yeah. That I really wanted to make the pilot of. And so when it didn't happen, that was when it didn't happen. I actually had already booked not dead yet. So it was kind of oh, like the deal was, was ending. The deal was ending happened. and we, and I got the offer for not dead yet. And I was kind of like, but if you had you an know, overall with NBC, you couldn't do that. But that's because the, the it had already technically expired. <clears throat> so they just hadn't decided if they wanted to make the pilot. yet. And the, li- and, and the script was lifestyles of the poor and boring. Is that correct? That is correct. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. Look at that. You got a show. It gets canceled. You get another show soon thereafter for six years, gets canceled. You get a development deal that ends. Uh, you were you book uh, not dead yet the last cast but it's fine last person yeah last person second mm-hmm. oldest on it second uh, oldest woman um person oh. there's only two men on it and we're both in our twenties okay. I don't know how old Josh is I have to imagine he's late twenties sure yeah I'm twenty two yeah uh, T W O not as well I uh, thank you um and uh, now by the time this episode comes out we will probably have found out. Also, maybe not, but decent chance we'll find out if if our show is getting a second season or canceled. Should we be doing like a choose your own adventure moment? Like, should we be like acting as though we just found out the show got picked up? I was going to suggest we do both. Yeah, do both. And then we could put in. um, But I want to do it in a way that where it's closed ended at the end of this segment. So that way, if it gets picked up and we got do our picked up thing, then when it ends, everything thereafter isn't going to be based around that. That makes sense? Yep. That way we we could cleanly take out Whichever yeah. one wasn't the case and put in. So let's first, uh, you want to do, what would you like to do first? Canceled or not canceled? Canceled. Um, uh, I did have a really fun time working on the show with you. I'm bummed it didn't get picked up. Yeah. One of the reasons is we didn't get to do that many scenes together. And I think that we really could have had a lot of fun. Yeah. That last, that last episode, we, it was the one where we got to have the kind of storyline together. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what the last episode is because we didn't record in order. Right. We were on the roof. Remember? Yes. Yeah. That's the finale episode. <clears throat> Correct. Um, and what you probably all saw. What a brilliant. I still it was can't beautiful. believe it after that didn't get picked up. That up I it's a bump they I bet you they made their decision before seeing that because wow. Yeah, I know. I just don't know. It feels uh really overwhelming. Yeah. Also, you know, you take for granted you work with these people. Everybody is so nice. Yep. And you then know? it just is over. And it's like, what, what even was that? It's so fucking weird because like you go, it's, it's like you're going to war with these people. Like you're trying to do this thing that is this dream. It's so hard to get a job and then you get a job and then you work with these people and you fall in love. Every one of them. I, um, Gina, Hannah, Josh, Angela, Lauren. I know all of the names. Yeah, that's good. Uh, David and Casey, the creators, Mm -hmm. all of the writers. I know all their names and all of the, uh, the crew. That's yeah. the most important part. And you know all of their names. I don't know all their names. I remember a few of them. Mm-hmm. Um, Dean, he was the guy on the show. <laughs> he, you know, he directed some stuff. He was the supervising director. Yeah, but he was more than that to me. He was a. Uh, he was kind of like our our you know our leader. You know yeah. him and and Gina, who oh from 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 forty year old virgin. I don't think that was the. I don't think that was she, hers. Well, I'm saying like mm-hmm. she loved that movie. Sure. And you could see that she was inspired, you know, cast by the great, um, you know, the, the woman who did Golden Girls. Sure. Uh, Fresh Prince, mm-hmm. uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yep. Um, you know who I'm talking about, right? Yeah, that scout for the comedy store. Yeah. Uh, man, she's great. She's uh, Allison Jones. Yeah, I'm familiar. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I had a lot of fun and I'm really sad yeah. that that show got canceled. Fuck. Damn. I fucking love that show. And I fucking hate that that happened. I do too. I really do. What are you going to do now? I don't even know. How's your heart? It's not great, Rick. It's not great. I went back to that cardiologist and he's like, your heart's aged a hundred years. Oh shit. Because the show, because of the not show dead ending. yet canceled. Yep. Sounds like maybe dead soon. Dead soon. Fuck. That show was so good. What was your favorite part of that show? I, You, me. Same in that order. Yeah. Anyway, let's get on to some other things. Sounds good. And now... Now let's do the... Yeah. Yep. Um, I still want... Uh, I want to know if our show got... You don't know if... It, did you hear anything? Hold on. Why? Oh, did you get a text from somebody? It got picked up. I just got... I just got the deadline notification. Are you serious? Yeah. 
I just got a text from one of the scouts from the comedy store that told me. I'm sorry. You can keep this in, but make it real. Here's something I've learned as a dramatic actor. Oh, make it real. Okay, great. Here's something I learned. Oh, no. The the situation is what's funny. uh, Sure. Okay, great. If people don't believe the situation is real, unless it's very slapstick, which I'm sure we could do fine, but like- Treat it real. Vaudeville. Have you thought about it? <laughs> There's a day that goes by. We should do an act. Can we do this? All right. Also, you wouldn't find out from deadline because we would know before the announcement is made. Sometimes. Sometimes. Okay. But for this scenario, for this Don't scenario. Do, do whatever. Hold do on. It. Hold on. I, ju- I just got a text from Dave and Casey. Oh, they're creators. I know their names and that's important. Show got picked up, baby. Are you serious? Yes. Check your phone. Oh, shit. Yeah. Beep, boop, 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 beep. Hell yeah. Come on. Oh, that's amazing. They don't yet know if it's going to be um, a full season or not, but it's going to be at least another 13 episodes. It's something. It's something. Oh, man, that's so great because our show is so good and it's important. And it's important. You know, let me tell you something that's important um, that I came up with. I came up with this idea Please. of why it's important. Yeah. This is a show that the first three leads are women, but it's not a show about women. I think I actually heard and, Hannah and two, say that in an two interview. Two of those women, uh-huh. uh, first and second on the call sheet, they're women of color, which to me, there's nothing better than a woman of color. One of my favorite things in this business is women of color. Sure. So to, and the show's not about women of color. You have one, two, three, four people of color. I'm not of color. You're not of color. Is it a coincidence that you're the only person I've had on this podcast? I think it is. Because I would love to have people of a color. Sure. Especially a woman of color. Right. Our show has three women of color, four women, and it's not even about women. It's about, you know, seeing dead people and and change. Change. Accepting the things that you can't change. Like in Alcoholics Anonymous. Yeah. I shouldn't have said that. Well. But, like, what I love so much about the show is at the end of every episode, um... And my grandma told me this, so you know it's got to be true. Sure. There's a message. Yeah. And that's important. That's because David and Casey come from a background of writing for the show, This Is Us. Right. Which has a lot of messages, which are, you know, Mandy Moore, she's, you know, she could play at any age. (laughs) She really, with enough of a prosthetics budget, she can. Yeah. Um, I'm a huge Entourage fan, so I've been a fan of her since, since Aquaman. Was she on that? Yeah, she used to date Vinny. Oh, okay. And there was a little, it was a little tumultuous. Was she playing herself on the show? She was Mandy Moore. She was playing Mandy Moore. Mandy! I can't, I can't see. Well, you've, you put it in front of me, so. Just watch it when you get home. Okay, I'll. All right, well, right there. send me a link or something. Okay, sure. Do you want me to hold this for the rest of the show? Like, okay. I got it, got it. Oh, right. And rest in peace, Ray Liotta. Yeah. Dead. But do you see me anymore? I do see it, thank you, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. You know, I watched Entourage, but I get, I didn't, I gave up eventually, so I, I maybe oh, dipped out before then. Home. Well, I was raised by a single father, so. Do you ever think about that, like, you know, you wanting something and you trying something and then you finding out maybe this isn't for me because not who I am, me being horn, not me, but because of these other people out there and how much power are you putting in other people? So much so that when you don't have a job, um, you have a heart attack because <laughs> people aren't approving of you. Because uh, you could perform whenever. I perform all the time. Sure. Uh, that could be true. That could be true. Uh, Are you in therapy? Are you familiar course. with BetterHelp? Of, is that a sponsor of the show? I don't know what is happening. If it is, we'll put up a lower third. Oh, sure. Okay, great. Uh, no, yeah, I'm in therapy. Yeah, look, there's a lot of things we could get into about that. I don't know if it's necessary. Um But I think I don't know that it's the validation that I was looking for. I think it was more the experience because when you're on a show for six years, which we're clearly going to be on not dead yet. Well, now now that it's picked up now that it's picked up a book in this. So, um, well, here Uh, when you're on a show for six years, 
like we will be on Not Dead Yet. But but don't say that because because now we're moving forward. So sure. Because it, we might not have been. So so like it could let it go either way. My suggestion would be like if you're on a show, uh, if, if you're fortunate enough to be on a show for six years and when you point to yourself, it could mean like, oh, you're we just picked up. This is going to be us. Sure. Or me like because I was on your show. Yeah. So, you know, so it could go either I way. I want you to know that my instinct is to keep saying the same thing, but I feel like you won't get that I'm doing the bit. I get everything. <laughs> okay. Well, that was the joke. Um, <clears throat> no. Okay. Well, if you're fortunate enough to be on a show that runs for six years, I think like, what I- Like not dead yet. What I, <laughs> uh, like Superstore. Oh. I think um, what part of what I really missed was the experience of going to work every day and having a schedule and having somewhere to be a dummy and all of the above. So you can perform, certainly. You can go and perform in a multitude of different ways in a multitude of different places. But so many big words. I think, thank you so much. I think for me, it was that I missed, part of what I missed was not just the performing, but performing in that kind of uh, uh, schedule. Yeah. Yeah. It's different. Yeah. It's different. I like performing for camera. I'm the sure. same gal that I was when I was seven years old. I yeah. like being on camera. I like the whole, I like the whole uh, process of TV. You know, it's interesting. Like that. It's interesting to say that you're the same girl when you were seven, oh, implying no. that you are actually still that fatherless child. I'm not a girl, not yet a woman. Why make jokes to hide this? You're a child mm -hmm. who, whose father you've been looking to find and it has been filled by showbiz. <laughs> Have you met Lauren's dad, Mr. Showbiz? Listen. And when he goes away, you don't know what to do. You need that schedule. You need that parenting. You need that person <clears throat> to tell you, not only are you good at this, you should be doing this. We want you to be doing this. I don't care if you're long form or I don't care if you're short form, as long as you're one of the two. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think we should make it clear because we've, we've said it so many times. I wasn't raised by a single father. Of course. That's why you um, need, that's why you're looking to fill that void. Sure. Sure. But I mean, I had a great upbringing, of course. you know, um, that's great. so I just feel like I need to put that out there and then say like, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> Showbiz is your dad. Isn't it? Yeah. I mean, listen, why does anybody get into what we do? I really? I, I know I'm very in touch with why I got why into it. Why did you get into it? Um, if you haven't told this story so many times I don't think I've ever on this, this show. Oh, wonderful. But there is a lot of stuff I have told that people maybe haven't seen unless they've gone to my Patreon. I had a sneeze. Pardon me. <laughs> <clears throat> so why'd you get into it? I... Uh, <clears throat> I always did jokes because it was, uh, I, could, I have talked about why. It was just the way I would connect. I never knew how people felt or felt about me in particular. I right. got very confused with my relationships and the lack of friendships I had where people were nice and they went away and uh, do I have friends? And uh, I always knew uh, what a laugh meant. And I always sought it. Um, and with that is me wanting to play. And uh, I didn't realize it th at the time, but it's not always appropriate. Not everybody wants to play all the time. Sure. Um, but that was a skill I was developing and something I always wanted to do. Right. Same with basketball. I just had to make a choice, NBA or showbiz, and I chose showbiz. And uh, So you had like an NBA contract offered to you? I had a 10-day contract. 10-day? I, I, contract. I was, had a 10-day contract with the Cavs, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that that was a thing. Mm -hmm. well, how does that work? It, it's Typically, it is to get you on... Uh, uh, like it's a trial thing, like to see how you would fit with a team and or somebody is injured. So they bring somebody in. I look at a 10 day contract the same way I look at some, somebody asking you to do a table read for something that's going to production. It doesn't mean you're probably not going to get the role, but if you kill it, it's a great opportunity to be in front of these people. So you turned that down? No, I did. The, I, I did the 10 day contract. Oh, you did? I, I never got in. Ah, but yeah, I actually told this story on an episode that came out a couple weeks ago with Jay Larson. It was the NBA or it was stand up. And I knew in the NBA, I mean, I had a 10-day contract. Uh, I knew I wouldn't, I, I wasn't going to be great in the NBA. Uh, I didn't know how much money I could make <laughs> you did, did for the cast, absolutely. And You did not have a 10 did. When? What year? 2013. Really? Mm -hmm. Was LeBron on the team then? Or was he in Miami? LeBron was, LeBron was. Wait, did you play in college? I played at college. I played at college, intramural. But I didn't get good until my senior year. Well, junior year. Uh, I knew LeBron. 
one of my good friends is good friends with LeBron, and we kicked it. And uh, is that how you got the ten day contract? I don't think they would have given it to me if they didn't think I could play. But LeBron did bring me in. Yes, <laughs> this is not real. Google it. Ten day contract. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Didn't play once. Mm-hmm. Um, got to got to sit on the for a game one time because there was only against two uh, Pistons at home, and there were three games during those ten days, and the other two were away, and they wouldn't let me go, and it made me think of in high school when I was on the JV team. Uh, excuse me, the first year uh, I played basketball, it was actually junior varsity. And they didn't have enough jerseys, away jerseys. So I would sit on the bench, but I was wearing a shirt and tie. I was like, even in the NBA, I can't do away shit. <laughs> uh, but I got, and I didn't get to get in. Uh, we lost. Uh, but I practiced with them for two weeks. Damn. Yeah. I still don't even know if I believe you. Absolutely. That doesn't matter. We don't need to get into it. I've talked, I've talked about it. I know before. you can game. I love that. You I think I'm no- phenomenal? That's incredible. I, you know, I'm always really inspired by professional athletes. So that's just, I mean, I, I knew you were very, very good. Well, I am actually f- technically phenomenal. I didn't. You didn't what? I didn't know that. Hit that, Baldy. Catch the fucking ball, dude. You're not aware of how other people perceive you. What are you talking about? Good take, you idiot. Ah. Whoops. Are you not entertained? Got it. Go left, go left. Oh. Let's go, let's go. Are you fucking nuts? I am phenomenal. I got big balls. I got a cool guy haircut. I got. I've seen that. It's great. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. And I think what's amazing is, is that it proves that there are so many layers. To every well, person. But the point is, it, it, it wasn't, I chose not to go basketball. Right. So you had, you had the opportunity. You were there. You were in the game. It was happening. I never got in you, a game, uh, but I was practicing with the team. But I couldn't have. They didn't put me in. But if, but in a, you know, if you'd stuck with it, if you'd say, said bye-bye to a potential showbiz career, who knows? Yeah. Chances are, I also probably wouldn't have made it far in the NBA anyway. That's also a part of why I made that decision. Right. Um, but I wanted to play and uh, uh, I wanted to make stuff. Sure. And I was doing it all the time. I was making sketches with my boy, John DeWalt. I just loved playing. Of course, I had a dream of being able to do this as a living. Um, I think John DeWalt was in my stand-up class. No, he never took a stand-up class. Mm, all right, never mind. Oh. Um, he was Is in it Second possible City, there's though. another John DeWalt? No, not in showbiz. Okay. Ask your dad, text him. Don't bring that up. Okay. Um. <laughs> And uh, I loved it. It was, it's community. It's similar to basketball. Comedy is a community. It was, yeah. uh, and I talked about this recently. I don't remember which yet. May have been Jay Larson for whatever reason. But I, people talk about stand up being a lonely thing. And I, I get how it could be when you're on the road and you're doing, making real money. But it always felt like a community where like, I wanted to watch people. I wanted them to watch me. I wanted, I loved waiting. I loved driving to shows with people. I didn't love waiting. I wanted to get on, but like, I loved that I had people to wait with. I probably wouldn't have done it without that. Mm-hmm. Like going to clubs and waiting to see if you could get up. Um, and it was just like, I, I have friends. I have a community. That's what it was for me. Um, and the idea of like being on a network sitcom I didn't even really think about, I mean, of course I would have wanted that, but that wasn't like something I envisioned. I did envision doing late night and winning awards. We talked about this, I think, because you did Conan a couple of times. Three times. Um, Amazing. uh, uh, That I would picture like what bits I would want to do on there, but I never had like the backstory of why I was on there, like what I would have made to have done that. I just wanted to be laughing. Right. Still, I love laughing. I don't have friends, the exception of maybe some... Like from when I was a little kid and their grandfathered in, like fam, family, friends and stuff. I can't, I don't have any friend that doesn't make me laugh. Right. Yeah. I, I actually, I'm pretty judgmental of I, people who don't. I was waiting for you to get there. I was waiting for you to get there. Seriously. I just, boring people. Well, then let's, let me be, let me put on the therapist hat for a second and say, is that true of people that you date also? Hmm. Because I find, speaking generally, not speaking, I'm not saying not all men, but I have found that there's two kinds of male comedians. Little dicks, big dicks. (laughs) 
There's the ones who genuinely are are like what you're saying, and that extends to also the people that they date. And then there's the male comics where it's like that extends, but the line is that they absolutely do not want to date a funny woman. I don't. I haven't uh, asked these kinds of questions mm -hmm. too much, so uh, I will not concede that I agree to that. I mean, I'm sure that exists. I do know there are people that say they don't want to date comedians. Sure. But I also would prefer not to date. Uh, I, I, it's not I've done this before and it's not a, a hard rule. But like when you set expectations as unhealthy as it may be of like what I'm looking for, at least to have an idea. My thought is I don't want to wouldn't want to date uh, a comedian or an actress. Yeah. Um, that doesn't mean funny. I would need them to be funny. Writers, fine. I just, I just, yeah, that's something I've just had experience, at least with actresses, and I don't think I want that. Right. Um, but that's not because they're not something. It's just my bias on the business right. side of it. Right. So are is that what you're saying? And again, I also, that's not even that much. That's kind of a blanketed statement. But like, yeah, they need to be funny. So are you saying like guys don't want to date comedians that also do stand-up? Or are you saying they don't want a woman who's a funny they woman? They don't want a funny woman. That's what, that's been my experience. And again, I'm not you've saying- you dated comedians who say, I don't like that you're funny. Correct. They said, they were conscious of it. I don't like that you're funny. Uh, it has been the end of at least one relationship, yeah. There was, what here's was an the example. Here's an example. I was very young when I was dating a much older comedian. This was back in Toronto. How long were you? How old is he? I was 20, he was 31. Okay. And we went to a party with all of his friends for the first time. We've been dating for a little while, few few months, a couple months. And, and, and did you tell him where to finish? Uh, at that point, I had stopped directing. Where was he finishing? Just so, just for context, so we know. I don't remember, to be honest. You I don't, don't remember, remember where he that. Finished? No, I don't. Okay, I don't remember. Um, didn't stick with me. So we're at this party, and we're with all of his friends, and I'm kind of like you know, not holding court in an obnoxious way, but something was happening and I was telling a story and everyone was laughing. Everybody was loving it. And then he kind of like disappeared. To add everybody was loving it is really funny to me. Everyone was everyone loving was it. Everyone was laughing. Everyone, everyone was, was loving, loving it. it. But it wasn't, I you guess- You should just to give, have seen me. Well, because <laughs> the next day, and then he was like, he like passed out in a bed somewhere. And he's a stand-up comedian? He's a stand-up comedian. And, uh, you know, we had to get a cab because this was pre-Uber because I'm- very elderly and old. And um, the next day he was like, you really embarrassed yourself last night. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, everyone was like so uncomfortable. You were so, and I'm like, well, tell me. And he made up this whole story about this shit that I had done and said that I had no memory of doing. And I believed him. I was 20. I was were like, you, shit. Were you really drunk? No, but I was like, I guess I was drunker than I thought. Like I took the gaslight. Mm -hmm. Cut to seven years later, I ran into someone that I had met that night at that party. He was the host of that party. And he said to me, he's like, I said to your boyfriend that night uh, that when you're around, he's not the funniest person in the room anymore. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh. And I was like, so do you remember anything about that night? Like, did I embarrass myself, whatever? And he said, no, you were great. You were hilarious, blah, blah, blah. It seemed like you didn't have a father. Excuse seems me. Like, it seemed like you only had I, a father. The point is, the point is, um, yeah, it was just, it was very interesting because again, I, then when I like had in that moment, the like flashbacks of yeah. the relationship, I was like, oh, he was constantly trying to get me to like be smaller and less funny and all of the above throughout that relationship, which I think speaks to someone who maybe is dating a woman much younger than him. That was a joke that wasn't, that wasn't directed at anybody gotcha. or anything, but like, you know, it was like that specific well, I, man. What, what's the, I, I, was there any truth to that? Cause if so, I'm curious what you, what you meant. I think that specific man may have sought out someone that was that much, that was that young at the time because his perception would be funny that, just that it was like someone that is, you know, submissive, right? Does younger mean submissive? I think in some minds it does not to me, but I think in some minds it is. I would think that young people are more firecracker. I think now, but I think when I'm talking, which was, well, <laughs> yeah, I think TikTok is really letting people, but also, you know what? I actually agree with you because of, I think that there's like been a real shift. I think there's a lot more esteem in young people now than there was when I was that young. Um, And and this experience has led you to believe that, that male comedians or males, which one, that's not rhetorical, I'm asking, don't like a funny woman. Oh, I think male in general, men's in, men in general. But I, I'm just, I, that was just the, th the thought that had struck me. You know, I've heard enough women say this. So obviously it's something they've seen. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know Ashling Bay? No. Uh, very, very funny stand-up comedian. She's been on my podcast. We'll put up a thumbnail. Um, she is uh, Irish. 
Mm-hmm. Which is oh, fine. Which is fine. Yes, I know her. Yes, I don't know her personally, but I know I know of her. Yes. Um, and she has a, and I don't remember the joke, so this isn't the joke, but the premise of it. It was her just talking about that type of thing, how men don't like a funny woman. Yeah. Uh, on how they like the sense of humor. I want her to have a good sense of humor, yep. just a sense of it. Yep. And like when I heard that, I remember that I believed her, but I also felt like, what does that mean? Because I also heard women say, and I haven't heard men say this, by the way. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. But sure. I've also heard women say that men don't like a woman who makes more money than him or makes a lot of money. Correct. I remember my grandfather um, telling me, uh, marry a, a rich woman. And I that didn't sink into me in a way where it's like, that's something I need to do. But it definitely didn't sink into me something I need to avoid. I just remember that because I just remember my grandpa didn't talk to me about that stuff. Right. About you know, my future and wife's and children's and jobs. Just there's two things I remember that he said. I'm sure there's more if I thought about it, but it's marry a rich, rich woman and it's better to belch and bear the shame than not to belch and bear the pain. And I do live by that. <laughs> yeah. And fill and belch sure. by whatever it is to make you comfortable. Absolutely. Um, but like I've dated uh, women who had no money and I've dated women uh, who had a lot of money. Yeah. And I'll take a lot of money 10 out of 10 times. That's interesting. That. That's interesting. It's that has been that has been something that has been in almost every relationship. I have to say in. something. I'm feeling. I want to make sure. It's fine if you don't make a lot of money. Um, as yeah. long as I'm making money, one of us has to be making money. Someone needs to be making Someone money for making sure. Money. For um, sure. But I'm just saying the 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 uh, in pros and cons. I don't see a con in having a lot of money. I do see a pro. Uh, we could go travel together. Uh, uh, you could pay your own way at least. Yep. You could buy me stuff sometimes. I mean, sure. th- awesome. Yeah, but you know, I think that a lot of, in my experience, a lot of men, they they approach it that way. They come into a situation, using myself as an example, not that I'm so rich, it's not that, but someone who's very successful, right? And does make money. Mm-hmm. A lot of men will come into not a relationship- rich, But somebody who's, and I quote, very successful. Very <laughs> successful. So a lot of men will come into a relationship with me with that mindset. But what I have experienced is, well, in my experience, 100% of the time, it ends up turning into uh, feelings of inadequacy, feeling like they can't live up. Why am I even here? If I can't contribute in some way financially, you don't need me. You just want me. And that's not enough. And that's something that I've always found really interesting because for me as a, a woman, I would prefer and that what a, a woman. Thank you so much. I would prefer that a man really wants to be with me as opposed to needs to be with me. And what I have experienced, mm-hmm. the the feedback that I have received is the opposite, is that it's like, but if you don't need me, then that doesn't make me feel like I need to be here. I think a healthier way of looking at that is, and also a realistic way of looking at it is you do need to provide value to each other. Sure. Um, whether you need that or not is, you know, a, a different conversation. But like, I've said, I've said on a podcast before. I don't remember when it was, uh, but like, and pardon my uh, my crudeness in the Please. term come. But I have said uh, in a joking way, but very inspired. If you don't feed me, uh, uh, teach me something, make me laugh, or make me make me come. Don't don't come to the table. Yeah. Like, what is the point of this? Right. Not that one of those things is enough or some, but, or there are things that are more important, but like in any friendship, romantic or otherwise, just like, what do you have to offer? Like, offer me something and I have to offer you something both. So you're getting something from me. So I feel valuable and I'm getting right. something from you. Um, finance, finances could be something that somebody could offer, especially if they grew up in a way where they didn't have those means that, and, or they felt they needed to take care of their family or they didn't have somebody to take care of them. And now they're in a position where they can take care of or they can't take care of. And there is some esteem built into like, can I provide for it? So I understand how that could exist. And it's different for all people. But like in a more global statement, it's why it's so important to find what value you have to offer and uh, be able to have more than one thing. Um but the problem is, is that when all the things you bring to the table are things that can make men feel inadequate, you end up kind of getting yourself backed into a corner. No, it has nothing to do with you. Of course it doesn't. But the point is, is that when I when I bring to the table that I'm very funny, very funny, very successful, uh, 
that I, development deal did I say? Doesn't matter. Um, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, so, so for me, for me, for example, I would never feel inadequate if I was with a man that was funnier but than me. But you feel it you would have never... value. Are you not, are you maybe dating men that don't feel they have value? I absolutely am, Rick. Because you know why? You're looking for men like your father, showbiz <laughs> men. <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. I have dated all. I don't every... mean men in showbiz. I mean people no, that I have that, that type of thing well, where it's like the only thing I have a value is I have to be funny or I have to be a good actor or I have to be a beautiful person or I have to be a great singer. And without that, I'd be nothing. And people that have maybe one thing they have to offer, perhaps finances, or they can't even offer that. Right. I guess what I'm asking is, is that where are the other men then? Because what I see is a lot of successful men who are dating women who are not necessarily as successful as them. Great that that they want to like raise children and do these things. Like mm -hmm. there is a different value set, I think, that a lot of of men who are the men that you're talking about, the that that aren't the men that I've dated, um, they have a different value set too. So then you end up in no man's land. Uh, you're welcome because it's like you can't fit into what this is, and you can't fit into what this is. What is, and so what is there to fit? There's no fitting in. I think that we've had very different experiences in dating. And I don't know how many, how, what your like demographic is in terms of your I fuck viewers, thousands of women. viewers for this show. But I think that a lot of women would feel. I'm just joking. I, listen, it's, it's not a competition. We all have a resume. The point is, I think there's lots of women that, that feel the same way that I have. And, and dating as a woman has gotten really weird. Mm -hmm. I think, date, gotten really I think weird. dating is challenging, period. I think it's challenging, period, too. I'm saying when you have, a, have, a, when you have your period. That, thank you very much which I'm all over this couch. Um, sorry, blankets. But the, the, you're not, but like the, even just the language of to fit in to what a man wants, and I'm not putting that on you. I'm just saying what you just said. Totally. Um, is like, let, in a way to make it, um, I, 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 uh, in a device to, to maybe have us be on a more similar plane, both having different dating experiences sure. and being a man and a woman. Yeah. Not necessarily in that order. Let's remove it from dating and just friendships. Right. Sure. Um, you and I became friends and we still don't know each other that well, but we became friends and um, person I talk to the most on our show and I've done the least amount of scenes with. Right. I could say I fit in with you and or you fit in with me, but it was just it's just frequency shit. Yeah. It was easy and safe to be around you. Right. Um, so let's be friends. Right. And then we might get to know each other and get closer or further apart. But like that's the story. That's what dating is. I think you kind of you. Like, oh, this person is worth exploring this thing. Um, but then depending on who I am doesn't mean anything about your value and vice right. versa. So where we fit in into a friendship, it's, 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 it's both of us need to like, if our frequencies are aligned and right. or it's worth it for us to try and make that happen, we'll continue. A woman, and I'll speak for all women, when Thank they've you. had experiences with men and then just it didn't work out, at a certain point, there is some responsibility in looking into why am I attracted to these men? And see, I really disagree because mm -hmm. I think that that's something that I believed for a really long time. And what that bred in me was that constantly like, what do I need to adjust? What do I need to do? And what I've learned is, is, is actually what you've just said, which is like, but really, at the end of the day, it should be about just finding someone that you have that connection with and you have that that frequency with. But and you all have of the that above. connection with those people that you've been dating. That's why you dated them. And then that's why you got into relationships with them. If when I meet somebody and like we're on a similar frequency, right? And then they're shitty, like as a friendship, just a friend, like sure. they're shitty to somebody or I just find them a little bit annoying and it's not worth it. And or they smell and, you know, you bring it to their attention, maybe. By the way, this isn't a conversation. You've heard me talk about perfume. It's not about that. Um, I just remember as a kid, somebody smelt, and I just always looked at them as a smelly person. Right. Um, if there's just something, uh, like, you step away. But when you see that in somebody you're dating, you might not do that. Right. It's easier to step away from because it's... You, 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 one really wants to find their partner. Sure. Then there's more, it's, you know, and it's monogamous. So like you have to, it's, it's not like you could do multiple friends with that. So when you notice these things and you don't, you're not unattracted, you don't go away. Yeah, that is, 
It's not something you need to fix in yourself, but it is something to become more aware of. Absolutely. Why do I? Why am I attracted to these people? Why am I giving these people these kind of chances? Right. A hundred. I I hundred percent agree with you. I think my my thing that I would only say is is that I don't know where this larger pool is because I can make great friends with people, but then it's like because you it's know. fucking so fucking hard, man. And 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 it's different for men and women. And I'm not saying easier or worse on either way. I think it's different from the person, let more so than what sex. Right. But like, because it's fucking, it's so hard. It's hard, yeah. Because you have to, you have to be, you know, such good friends with them. You have to be sexually attracted to them. They, uh, they have to live close enough to you or you have to be okay with them not. They have to fit in your lifestyle and you theirs. You have to offer each other value. You also have to be somebody who is able to have your own life with them as opposed to needing to be connected. They have to be that type of person. The timing has to be right. The religious values may have to be right. And then you do that and you're like, okay. And then you have the obstacle of what even great relationships are of things get stale and are boring and or hard and or you're not interested and or you're interested elsewhere. It's, it's so hard. Yeah. But it's an added obstacle if you, we, a person isn't in touch with, there are patterns of the men that I, or women uh, that I've been dating. And there is a responsibility on us to recognize that because listen, there are a lot of shitty and or narcissistic and or egotistical or whatever men out there. But like, there's also, there, I know there's awesome people. I'm awesome. Right. My friends are awesome. So, you know, Right. What the fuck? What exactly? Exactly. Set me up on some dates then, Rick. You um, know what I'm saying? Like well, this is right on in. Take your shoes off podcast at gmail.com. Send pictures. That feels now it feels like we're getting then it feels like this is something else. Like now it feels like this is I want to open up a Tyson universe of dating where I have people who've been on the podcast then come in and maybe I'll have like three women in an episode and three men. Yes. And like, do like some dating stuff. Do a, like a mini dating game. Yeah. I've thought about this before. I've yeah. even talked about having like my my audience like send in videos right and uh have people write but um the reason i say this is because i guess because it's valid so instead i'll just say it's such a bummer that you yeah and other women have experienced enough that men don't like a funny woman or a successful woman to then have that narrative built in because we might find red flags and things that aren't really red flags as much as they are projections Right. And, oh, this this type of guy is doing this. And then stuff becomes self-fulfilling. Somebody who doesn't want you to be funny might not want you to not be funny because they don't want somebody to be funny. They may think that my value is funny and I'm not as funny as her. I have nothing to offer or they which isn't a good thing. Mm -hmm. but I'm just saying there's other things going on. You're too tall. You're not tall enough. You're you're not you don't look the way I want you to. You're not making enough money. You make too much money. I mean, they all exist. Sure. But the idea that to pick the ones men don't like funny, men don't like successful, those are just but two guess, random ones. But I guess when I've been dating for decades of time. Why are you attracted to these men? But whenever, but I think that that's unfair because I think that what I have done has been very open to any, all different walks of life, different ethnicities, different occupations. And they all different, don't like that you're successful? It has been an issue in every relationship. Well, then you know what? Let me say. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. I think you are on this one. I I, I, I just... <laughs> and that's not to say, and hold on, that's not to say that they're... I'm not saying that that's all men. Again, I'm sure you're right. I'm sure there's lots of men that that is, that is not an issue for. But the, but the problem becomes that you are also, if, and I'm speaking of myself, when you're someone who's on TV, there's a lot that comes along with that. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of men that are also like, uh, I'm, you said, I don't really want to date an actress, right? So it's like, there is a lot of other factors where when we, we're dealing with the pool... Mm -hmm. uh, and the pool starts getting smaller yeah. and smaller and you are trying to be open, yeah. but you continually run into the same feedback from all these different sources. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And I agree with you that I think at the end of the day, it just sucks and it's just hard. And I think that that apps and swiping and all of that has like doomed all of us. I saw, did you know that the number one way people who are currently married, they did a recent uh, a poll. Don't ask me for the website, but I guess I don't remember, but it was... Uh, 80% of new relationships are starting on apps and that the number one place that people meet that are getting married is specifically Tinder. The last four girlfriends I've had, I've met online. Yeah. 
Uh, I think there's pros and cons to it. Uh, I do too. There's a lot of cons and we could get into it if we get into it. Ah. But uh, I do want to also acknowledge that there is a biological aspect to men and women and the differences. And yeah. You know what? Cancel me. I'll be the first to say it. I, I love think, it. I think we're different. I think we're I very think different. we're very different. And uh, the idea of men wanting to protect and care for and uh, reproduce with, um, also not necessarily in a monogamous fashion, um, uh, versus women wanting somebody to give them that child and to protect that child and protect them and to care for them. There is a biological thing built in us that exists. So th let's not discount that reality. So it probably is more common for a man to feel inadequate if he can't support the woman than vice right. versa. That being said, the immediate, the micro version of this mm -hmm. Isn't the micro a, penis version of this. The smaller penis version of this yeah. is not specifically about not being able to financially pay for it. It's this person not feeling they of they are of value. Totally. And there are a lot of people who do not feel that way. The, the, they maybe haven't figured it out yet. They haven't earned it for themselves yet. They're not in therapy. They're, they were they were, grew up in a way where they felt and were told that they're not valuable. You know, we're all responsible for doing our work to get us to be there. Yeah. So I think the pool by design is already a lot smaller than people realize. If you're looking for somebody that you're, you have good odds of being with somebody that whether it works out or not, the reason it doesn't not work out isn't because this person, it's, it, it was, it, it, it was unsustainable. Right. The, them on their own has nothing to do with the relationship. Right. So it's already very small. Um, but once you have the people that, feel they are of value and are self-aware and have done work on themselves. Uh, of Speaking of these people, I don't, I, I wouldn't believe that's a common thing. Hmm. I buy me everything. <laughs> buy I, me everything. I, yeah. Listen, I know. I, I mean, I, I'm just thinking of some of my friends that are either in relationships and or some of the relationships they were in. And there's one that comes to mind of this woman that he dated that she was, I mean, I don't know if this is telling of anything, but she was literally a, a, a guest shark on Shark Tank. Oh. I mean, very, that was awesome for him. Yeah. It's awesome. Sure. I just can't picture a person who's thinking, I believe it. I'm just thinking like, who wouldn't want that? Well, even, even if we take a step back to when I was like touring with Second City, okay? Uh -huh. And we would come off stage in whatever small town we were in at the time. Which is fine. There's nothing wrong with a small beautiful town. Beautiful places. Beautiful. The dudes would always, the dudes in my cast would always get hit on. There was always girls that were always Women like- Women like funny guys. Well, funny guys. You know what there wasn't? There was no men. There was no men lining up to talk to the funny women. And the ones who did right. made it a competition. Right. Or made it uh, aggressive. Let in, me play devil's a, advocate. Sure. Um, two things. One, the people that go to those shows sure. are comedy fans. Yes. So even the people that aren't performers are going to be a little bit competitive, right? Sure. Um, two, uh, I think there is a difference between being attracted to funny people, which women are typically are generally attracted to funny men, right? Versus being turned off by a funny person meaning men being turned off by a funny woman. I, I think those are two different things. Uh, also, um, I do think that the bio biological thing, I think that when a woman sees a funny man, they're seeing somebody who, a charismatic man, is somebody who could hold a room, who could get people's attention. That person has a better chance of getting things to help to help his success, to help his, the, 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 the money, food, relationships. Oh, this person... This person, I trust this person. This person could take care of me. Look at, they could take care of themselves. They could take care of the room. So I do think there's that biological thing where men aren't looking for a woman who can do that. Right. Men are looking for a woman who could give them, you know, uh, uh, a legacy. Sure. Like a children. Right. Um. So yeah, I, I guess it's it is it is a little complicated. It's complicated. It's complicated. I grew up with very funny people, very funny women, women in my family too. Yeah. So like That's nice. That's a good that's a good base. Yeah. It's a good baseline. Uh-huh. Yeah. Your is your is your mom funny? My mom was very funny. And she she exposed me to a lot of comedy that was probably She got you in the kids in the hall? 100%. Yeah. And she would also um we would watch a lot. A lot of the content that we would watch was like very very 
classic comedy stuff. And so she definitely was like a part of the Uncle education. Buck. Uncle Buck never saw it. Hmm. Never saw it. Um, I'm, I'm kidding. Of yeah, course. You're a John Candy fan, right? Of course. Canadian. Yeah, of course. That's why I say it. Thank you. You know, I played uh, Harold Ramis. I watched that because of you. You told me you were in that. And I was like, I texted you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Futile and stupid gesture. That's the kind of friend that I am. If a friend of mine says I was in this movie, I will watch it within the week. Always. Always. Wow. Yeah. Genuinely. Quite and this isn't a bit. This isn't a Have bit. Have you watched The Sixth Lead? What's the si No, I haven't. Are you in that? I'll watch it this week. Yeah. If you go to uh, uh, rickglassman.com, you oh. can see at the top, there's a link for The Sixth Lead. Great. I'll watch it this week. Um, you'll I'll you know watch it this think. week. And you'll, you'll get a text. And then you'll send me. Well, why don't you actually send me a video message? Film it this way. Sure. And then we'll cut to your review of it now. Wonderful. Sup, players. It's your girl, Lauren Ash, with a review of Rick Glassman's The Sixth Lead. Uh, my first thoughts are great production value, extremely well shot, impressive, um, well written, almost felt like there was maybe an improv element, kind of like a Curb Your Enthusiasm vibe. Love that. Love that. Um, yeah, well performed. I can see why this was nominated for awards. Did it win? I think it did win some. Well deserved is the point. Um, I'm gonna be 100% honest, I haven't finished all the episodes yet, um, but that's only because uh, there was a new season of Love is Blind and priorities, you know what I mean? Anyway, congratulations, Rick. So proud of you about this project and I'm uh, so proud to know you. Peace. So since comedy is so important to you, do you <laughs> feel that, uh, oh, and thank you so much for those kind words or, well, I appreciate your honesty. You know, it was a while ago. Yeah. Um, are you wanting uh, to be dating somebody who's funny? Do you not care? Do you have a preference? Ultimately, I think ultimately it's, it. I don't I only want to speak care. In only in ultimates. Um, I don't care. I do feel like for me, like you were saying, I think you said something before the, along these lines. I was like, if someone makes you laugh and you like having sex with them, I think that that's like, that's it. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that the rest is all discussion and you can navigate. Kindness. Uh, kindness. That's up there. Yeah. Those are the three. Those are the three, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, I also think that there's a difference between being someone who is inherently like comedically very funny and someone who you have like I call it couch banter sure like someone who gets it someone who gets it so there's lots of I've dated people before that I had a great connection with that would not have been someone you would describe as typically funny but they made me laugh harder yeah, than you anybody guys are laughing together right so so to me again I don't need to be with someone who's like you know I, but also I'm completely happy to be with someone who's funnier than me I haven't met him yet, but you know, like, uh, right. I'm not talking it's a funny. It's a high bar. Than, it's a high bar. Yeah. It was just so a funny joke. And very successful. Just a joke. Very, very successful. When you say it's just a joke, I just want to let you know how it reads. Please. Um, the, of course it's a joke. Yeah. But then when you say it's just a joke, mm -hmm. it makes it seem like it's not a joke. No, it makes it seem, pardon me, insecure. Wow. It does. We're getting into it. Uh, and I'm not talking about you as a person. I'm talking about sure. the content of the delivery. Yeah. I feel that way when people when people are writing stuff and they say ha ha or laughy face when there's nothing funny. It's or LOL. Like uh, I'm running a little late. This traffic LOL. I know what you're doing. You're trying to let me know that you're showing me your palms. Right. Everything is good. But like the fact that you need to do that to me reads as you need to do that. Right. And uh, uh, I also feel that way when people write, if I write your coming over soon, question mark, and I, the wrong your or it does it something, I feel that people who correct the your, I also think that's a big insecurity. Sure. But you know what's interesting about this? This got brought up in one of our early uh, bits, bits, bit, bits, bit sesh. We, I, I think I know what you're going to say. Yeah. Because you and I are doing bits. Is it, was it about doing bits and then not acknowledging or laughing in the right way? And there was some confusion? Well, it wasn't necessarily that there's a right way or a wrong way, but it was just that we do bits differently. We, so then you and I really loved that you were like, I think we need to have a conversation uh -huh. to communicate about uh -huh. how we do bits. Uh -huh. Because I, I, and what I think it is for me is that it's not that I need you to laugh at my joke. It's that I need to feel understood. I have a, I, I have I a, yeah. I, I have. I'm just explaining for the other people listening. I know oh, I didn't you need to know. Shut you up. I know I'm, I'm, you I'm, know. I'm saying right, right, right. Yeah. I should have done this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I also want to clarify uh, when I say the term uh, insecure. Uh, I don't think that's the best word choice, and I I'm not calling you out or meaning any judgment, but by, by any means, uh, what I mean by that is it it like it stands out to me. Right. Um, 
I talk about this on stage now. I am the opposite, uh, which is something I, I want to go more toward the middle of. I used to never say I'm just joking. Right. I used to never. I, I, th- I thought it meant a moment of weakness. Uh, it was it was uh, either I didn't know that it was necessary to say because, of course, you know, you know, whatever I know. Right. Falsely. Or I felt like, no, 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 because now you're I, I valued the bit too much. No, no, no. So I would try to dig my way out by heightening it. And then eventually they know. But it's like I have this analogy, like if you have a stick and you were to break it on your leg, if you go hard and but it doesn't break, it really hurts. But if you go much harder and it breaks, you're fine. So you as you go as hard as you can, that way you know it breaks, but then you run the risk of it doesn't break. And I've experienced that a lot. Right. So when I see people say, I'm just kidding, there is something in me that I'm aware of where I where I'm like, I know, but now we can't play the game anymore. Right. So there's a there's a time to say I'm just kidding. Because it's the it, what's more important is that we're both on the same as if we're both on the same page, you shouldn't say it. Right. But if you don't know you're on the same page, you have to say it. Right. I have to get better at knowing when to say it. Right. So when I see somebody say it, but I know, I'm like, no, we know. Right. You know but that saying? person's also like, you know, wanting to connect potentially too. And it's like, I want you to know that I want us to just be on the same page. It's like a check-in. That's why I wanted to correct myself for saying insecure. I, I didn't mean that. I just, uh, it was like, that makes sense. Yeah. And you didn't know that I don't, don't know. Right. So it's important. But right. like- I'm thinking, I know. Right. They know. Of course. But also, they know you, but they don't know me necessarily. I well, mean, how could they not? I'm mean, very, very successful. successful. Um, but right? So it's like, I think that that's part of it too, is that it's like, if you and I were having a conversation now versus that first bit sesh that we had. Can we talk I, about that? Please. Uh, uh, you bring it up. Will you tell me your perspective of it? And I'll I, I'll add to it if need be. Yeah. Because I remember it. Yeah, but the, all the, just finishing that thought I was just having was I would be different now because now I know that I can, I can yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it was like, again, it's early days, right? So yes, we were on set. We were doing the roof scene. Mm-hmm. We were doing one of the days on that roof and we were doing bits. I was also having the worst week of my life that week. And I don't know that you knew that at the time. Was this a breakup? No, my dog died. And I, I was- I, kn- I know your dog died around yeah. that. I didn't know that was when it was. It was like two days after- Mm-hmm. And I also had gotten my period through those pants on set. These like designer wow. cream colored pants. I, and there was uh, my birthday venue had canceled. It was one of those things where my it was birthday like, venue, so rich. <laughs> but like, I was really excited about my birthday. And it was just one of those things where it was one of those days where like everything that could potentially go wrong just was going wrong on top of the loss of this very beloved animal to me. And your hormones being all over the place. And my hormones were all over the place. Also the embarrassment of, oh my God, I've I've had this happen. Who on set knew about that? Uh, Wardrobe and one of the PAs. (laughs) Oh, none of the other actors or actresses? I think Hannah maybe knew. Nobody knew in the moment. I told people afterwards. But so we we this was but this was one of the first times that we had been on set together. So we start doing bits, and when I do bits again with someone that I don't know, then I'll be like checking in. I'll be checking in. Right. So I would make a joke, and you'd say something, and I was like, yeah, "Come on, that's what that's kind of one of my go tos, right? Mm-hmm. If you don't laugh at my bit, then I go, "Come on," or "Hey," or whatever, yeah. or some kind of thing. And then Rick took me aside, and I would like to do impression of you if I can. Yeah. Are, are you okay? Um. Yeah. Just be gentle. <laughs> no, I'm fine. Yeah, I don't care. So he was, Rick takes me aside. This is Rick. <clears throat> yeah, I just wanted to check in with you because I've noticed that um, when we're doing bits, it's like you want some validation from me and that's just not how I do bits, but I'd like to continue to do bits with you. So I thought that maybe we should talk about this so then that way I'm giving you what you need in that scenario as well as me getting what I need. I didn't say validation. Okay, what did you say? Um, that uh, it's it's uh, it, uh, it seems like you maybe think I'm not enjoying this or thinking what you're doing is funny. Right, and then you said, it, but one of the things I do remember you said was, it seems like you really need someone to laugh. And I was like, it's not about that. It's that I need, uh, Sorry, that's how I remember it. Okay. Or an implication of that. I remember you telling me before I, because uh, I remember you telling me when somebody doesn't laugh, it makes me think that they're not enjoying it. Right, or I just, don't, because I just don't know you, right? So, so it was when you said that, I'm like, oh, so you, because uh, it was when you said that, that I knew that, oh, you wouldn't want me to laugh. And that's where I said, oh, I typically don't laugh in the bit because like, that then like means the bit's over. Right. So I didn't feel that, oh, she needs laughs. Got I it. just recognized that you're, uh, we were doing bits and I felt like we were in a vagina um, pocket. And 
then hot bar. Then there were moments where I noticed your energy kind of shifting. And uh, that's why I was checking in. Right. And when you it wasn't until you said, well, well, when you don't laugh. Right. That I realized laughing was a thing. Right. So that's where I said, oh, I typically don't laugh that much like in the in the thing. But I wanted to let you know, I think you're so funny. And I, I mean, that's why I'm doing these because they are so enjoyable. Um, and then I remember there was a, something I don't remember what it was, but there's something we did up on the roof and you did something that was funny. Um, but instead of keeping going, I went, ha 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 ha. <laughs> Yep. But then that became the bit. Sure. So then I would do something else. You'd be like, that's funny. And then you would make a point of like. But I so do feel defensive because I've learned how to when and how to check in with people. And I'm I'm I think I'm I'm I like that part of me. I loved it. And, and I, to, it, I thought it was so positive. Because I didn't like the way it seems like it seems like you need validation and people to laugh. There was no judgment and oh, I didn't say that. Sure. It was and me saying it was me asking, is there something I'm missing? Sure. And when you said the laughing, I'm like, all right, how do we find a way for me to commute? communicate back to you without me having to do something that is not what I do. Right. And I thought we found it. We absolutely did. And my impression may have been slightly more Jewish. glib. Don't put it out there. Oh, well, you went, well, <laughs> uh, technically, oh my, my elbow, uh, technically, uh, I, 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 we have to do it before sundown. I, <laughs> <laughs> I did not. I did not. But no, genuinely, I really appreciated it. And I was like, this is great. Now we're on the same page. This is awesome. I really, and it was also, again, but what you didn't know, the other factor that you didn't know was that that, that was one pants. of the worst days of my life. Yeah. Um, I've had worse days, but you know, just in terms of one of those days, it, it was, was like, tough, it was just, just a tough day. Yeah. And so, um, and a long day. that may have also been part of my energy waning at points or me being a little off was also that it was like, I just am not. You know, I had noticed it before. I I noticed it before. That wasn't the. It okay. wasn't like I saw that. I'm like, what's going on? There were. I've noticed that there was stuff happens with us where we hit. We're in the pocket, and then like, I didn't know what it was. I do now. It makes total sense. You thought whatever you thought I was thinking was, and that was probably it was a negative thing or not right. a good thing. Right. Um. I had no idea you were thinking that. Right. Um. But I just know something. I something is going on that I'm missing. Right. And that has happened enough in my life to where it's just, just let me ask you what it is. You know? Yeah. Well, yeah. That's great. I think there are, people need more of that in life. I want more, I want more direct conversations. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a, it's such a, it's such a skill set that, that, if two people don't have that appreciation for it, yeah, to be the one that wants it, to be able to get that to and from the other person is tough. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. Some people don't even know the thing. They're, I'm going to use our example arbitrarily for other people. Yeah. This person isn't laughing at me. This person doesn't like me. Or this person isn't laughing at me. I'm not funny. Or... Or this person isn't laughing. They don't even think that that they're laughing. This person's a fucking asshole. Whatever the thing is, somebody might have an idea of what the other person is and not recognizing that they're projecting it. So they wouldn't even know how to have the conversation of saying, hey, when you do this, it makes me feel this way. They don't even know it. Right. Let alone if you ask it, one, they might not know it. Two, even if they do, they might not feel safe enough to communicate it with you or yeah. know how to do that. I'm, I'm now I'm, I'm triggered. <laughs> just, uh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. There's just, there are times I'm talking with people and, and like, I am aware of what I'm unaware of to an extent. Yes. And I'm watching, I'm talking to this other person who just like, there is no world where we could get on the same page. Yes. There's no, it can't happen. Yes. And like, I have all the tools that I have, which I'm not fully enlightened by any means, but I've put a lot of work into this. Yep. And I'm seeing it and I, and I, it's like, this is, there is water here. There's uh -huh. water here. Yeah, but it's half empty. I, yes, it is. I'm not going to argue. Half full, half empty. Not going to argue. All I'm saying is, could we agree there's water? Um, yeah, as long as you agree that there's not, it's like, we're not having the same conversation. Yeah. So sometimes you're, you can't be direct. You're, you're doing great. I'm not talking about you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I think that it's foreign to people though. I think it's foreign to, I think also something that I like, one of my new mantras is about like vulnerability mm -hmm. and that I think that 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 requires vulnerability, right? Saying like, I'd like mm -hmm. to check in with you and, and have this, have explain this moment. Why? I agree. Will you explain why that requires it? Because I think that especially 
I think it's rare for people, for humans to to want to connect in that way. So rather than just being very like direct and open, um, like, cause that can feel uncomfortable for people, right? The, the person saying it, the person receiving it. The person saying it. I think that there are, that for some people that's really uncomfortable to say like, hey, there, I, I noticed this happening or whatever. Uh, can we talk about that? And I think that that's like, for me, the, the number one thing is like, if someone is just vulnerable and is like, hey, I just want to have this real thing with you. So by vulnerable, you mean uncomfortable? Um, I guess, yeah. If someone is willing to to communicate in a way that they don't know that the response they're going to get is necessarily positive, I think that's vulnerability. Well, that's just real communication. Sure, but I think that that's rare in terms of coworkers that don't know each other that well, in terms of like, typically that's something that only happens if you're in a long friendship or I'm saying if we approached, right. if we approached daily life with interactions with people in that way, I think that that would be very positive. Why is it uncomfortable? What does that mean? It's not uncomfortable for me, but I think that the feeling for some people is like, is this not going to be received well? Am I going right. to be rejected? Like those kinds of concepts. Right. And why is that bad? Uh, I think that, well, again, because I think that then people feel feel nude, right? Well, d don't, don't give it, a, uh, I apologize, but don't do an analogy because feeling nude is something that I can recognize feeling, the boundary of. Okay, feeling exposed. Somebody feels like I've communicated to you a feeling that I was having. Right, why is that bad? I don't think it is. Well, you said it's uncomfortable. Not for I'm me. I'm not speaking for you. Okay, I'm you're talking saying, in the general term. You're, well, you're, you're saying- I'm saying it's a revelation. You're saying this is uncomfortable. People don't want to do it. It feels bad. I'm saying right. why? What is What is that feeling that's bad? Well, again, I think it's the feeling of being misunderstood or being or being rejected. But you're already in some feeling way. misunderstood. That's why you want to bring the tension to it. You already right. feel that way. Right. So you already feel that way. Right. And so then people then people don't. They dance around it or they don't they don't connect with you why? in a genuine way. Because of the fear. Of what? <laughs> I'm not these people, Rick. I'm but saying you're, that, But you're speaking for them. Well, and that feels like maybe this is a misstep. Maybe I shouldn't be speaking for I'm, this group I, of people. I'm not trying to call you out. I'm really trying to get your perspective on this to yeah. add to mine, which I have, which is okay, how about why this? is how about it this? uncomfortable? Why is that feeling a bad feeling? Because I think I think that that's something that that we've that's like is societal, North American society. You don't feel that way. Right. So, but it's also taken me time to get to that place. So you used to feel that way. I think, th yeah, I think to some extent. Okay, then let's speak to you then. Okay. Why was it hard then? Because I think that there was, fee my big thing in general is, and, and you're right, it's such an oxymoron because my whole thing is that I do have this, I have a crippling thing where I, I can't talk to people on the phone I don't know. This is a truth mm -hmm. to this day. And when I broke it down, it was like, what's that about? It was like, I am f afraid of being misunderstood, mm -hmm. both in the micro and in the macro. I think it's a very human thing. Very human thing. So I think that sometimes if you are opening yourself up and being very real, the fear level can escalate that it's like, if I'm being real and then this person doesn't react favorably. So I'm being misunderstood at even a deeper level now. Right, that it's right. like now the real me is coming out and I'm saying, hey, can I connect with you in this real way? And that person shuts it down. That feels a lot more right, that painful than if it's like doing a bit or uh, keeping it light or whatever and, and you know making a joke about, oh, it kind of makes me feel uncomfortable when you, but, but that's just what, you know what I'm saying? But I think that that's a very human thing is to kind of put on whatever because the idea of revealing a piece of, of realness or has, as I was labeling it, vulnerability, I think is not something we typically are wired to want to do. Um, I want to bring up the perfume stuff. Could I talk about it? Yes. Okay. Um, we went to a basketball game yes. recently. Yes. And uh, you and Brent met at my place and I drove. And before Brent that got there, you got there. Yep. You got in the car and there was a strong smell of perfume. Yes. Uh, this is not a you thing. I've, there's something I've known about my, my mom sells perfume. This is an issue often at home. Yep. Um, I'm very sensitive to smells. Yes. Uh, and I, it was hard. It's hard for me. Mm -hmm. So when you got in the car, uh, I lowered the window a little bit and because it was raining, I wanted to let you know what was going on. Yep. And also wanted to set up, set it out there now just yep. so you know. And I was able to tell you this is strong, strong for me. I don't like this thing. I hope I did it in a way that didn't make you feel judged or that you're doing anything wrong. Not at all. But uh, I even said this is a me thing. Um, 
I know there are people that uh, that same situation could have happened and they would not have said something. Right. Exactly. Now, the reason they would not have said something is that because they're vulnerable and you're going to be misunderstood. I think that it would feel vulnerable to say that. So could you explain that? I think that for for someone else, it might be like, oh, I have this thing, but I don't want to make her uncomfortable. I don't want her to think I'm weird. I don't want her. And Those I'm not, are two separate things. And I don't, I believe they both could exist, but they don't have to. There's two right. things. One, I don't want to make her uncomfortable, which is a seemingly selfless thing. Uh, I think it's actually a bit manipulative. I agree. But um, the idea of you, at least on a conscious level, feeling, I don't want them to be uncomfortable versus if they're uncomfortable, they're going to then judge not like me. Right. Um, that's not the same to me as being misunderstood. Sure. A hundred percent. But I think that there's can be different reasons behind that. Right. Because I think, but, but it, it can't be misunderstood if the person's perception is, if I tell my real thing. Right. And then that person thinks I'm weird. I know that this real thing isn't weird. It's just what my life is. It's right. just who I am. So, but that's revealing who I am, the a real part of me. Mm -hmm. And then if that person is like, "Oh, okay, sorry, fuck you, weirdo, fuck you, weirdo," oh, I can then do what that's I want. Gonna, I'm, I'm my own woman, and no no man's gonna tell me what goes right. Then that's going to feel potentially that's going to feel more hurtful than not saying anything. All right, I have an argument then for that. Uh, how much do you think this statement is true? If I tell you, if I show you this sensitivity to, to, to my olfactory senses. Yeah. And then you think Rick sucks. Mm -hmm. That's going to make me feel misunderstood. Now, if uh, I am somebody who knows I don't suck. Right. And I am somebody who has accepted this is a weakness of mine and it is what it is. Does your opinion of me make me feel bad? Or does it make me just think, oh, she she doesn't she, she doesn't see that she's projecting? Well, I think that that it could be either, right? I think for you, you know the truth, which is which is the latter. I know that right? now. But, but you may not have always. But before I got to the point where I'm at now, where I love and accept who I am yeah. and I hope everybody, literally everybody else does. Yeah. But I'm fine if they don't. Before that. I felt through comedy, I know how to say how I feel without anybody getting upset. Right. I know how to make jokes about it. Maybe I'm wrong, but like that's when I thought that's why I did jokes all the time. Because right. like the only way I know how to communicate is the joke. I would have not liked then if I did a joke and the joke didn't work and then you got upset. I wouldn't have not liked it. But I don't think it would have been because I was vulnerable. But I think that that could be you mm -hmm. and someone else may have felt that that's vulnerable. Why is feeling vulnerable and or uncomfortable? I've talked about this on a podcast in a different way. I don't remember which one. Maybe it was Moshe Kasher one. Why is that bad? For example, you work out, your muscles get sore. Mm -hmm. Now you're sore. Maybe it even hurts. Awesome. Awesome. I'm getting stronger. This feels good. Nobody wants to hurt, but like if there's context to it, this is great. Why is uncomfortable a hurt that even though we know this is me getting stronger is like we try to avoid. I would work out. Um, I actually have the time. I even enjoy doing it. I just don't want to get in better shape. Like that doesn't make sense. So why is uncomfortable something that we want to stay away from so much? I mean, I think that different people, there's, it, it's it, different people have different motivations, I'm sure. But I think that the, it's very, again, human, certainly in our culture, because there's other cultures that aren't as much like that. Like I've seen other cultures where they can be very blunt, for example. But they're, but, but they're not and, uncomfortable being and they're blunt. Not unco exactly. And but neither if they person, were uncomfortable being blunt, they might not do it. Right. So I'm just talking specifically to the uncomfortable being the barrier. Right. I can't go through this because my muscles will hurt. I'm talking about that. Right. From well, I think that that's, I think it, it ultimately in some way has to like distill down into like wanting to be liked mm -hmm. and that it's, it's more yeah. important to try yeah. and protect 
your own whatever it is, the ego or whatever it is, it's more important to protect that and be liked than it is to, to necessarily be honest. And, and the- that's at the beginning of dating too, right? To tie it back in a way, it's like some people at the beginning of dating will present in a way that maybe isn't 100%. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're presenting their you know, super cut of their best traits where they're kind of like leaving out little details or whatever, which is human nature because you want to connect, you want to be liked. And then you get into a relationship with this person, you start to realize, oh, they kind of were maybe kind of softening yeah. or whatever, yeah. some of those things in the, the attempt to get liked. But this is the whole point is that it's so backwards because in your attempt to want to get liked, you kind of almost slightly bamboozled somebody. And then when you show them like, well, that wasn't hundred percent the truth. Now it's like you've built more intimacy with that person and it arguably is going to hurt even worse. Yeah. You people want to be liked and not necessarily for who they are. Right. They just want to be liked. Yeah. They just want the job. Yeah. But when you kind of right. remove that a little bit and not to say that it's like, that doesn't mean you have to like, you know, be an asshole to people. But when you you, you take that away a little bit, it's very freeing. I think. You know, I think the sad thing about that truth is people feel that they need to be this thing to be liked because the thing that they are isn't that likable. Correct. Yeah. And that goes back to the point that I was making of like, I know this thing about me. Right. So I, and this is a hypothesis I never thought of before and maybe not the case, but the more people will be a certain way that isn't authentic to themselves Mm -hmm. equates to how little they accept who they are. Yes. And the more you accept who you are, the easier it is to be that thing. Yep. I think the men you're dating don't accept themselves. I think you're probably, I think you're right. Actors. I think you're right. Yeah. Self-acceptance is like the, th- uh, maybe just after getting enough sleep is probably the thing that you peeps that one needs to do. Yeah. But it's difficult to get there because as children, we're raised to follow the rules that our parents put on us, that society puts on us, that all these mm-hmm. different things are. So you're constantly being given the messaging that you need to be a certain way. And, yeah. Right? Like, so I think... I agree with you 100%. And but I think that that is such a part of the like adult journey, not to sound like a total, mm-hmm. you know, you say contentious cuz there's nothing wrong with that. The other note, the other note that I got Bleep that. in theater school was you come off like a steely Jody Foster d-. Their words not mine. Right. Well, so, you grew up by with you know in, with a fa- only a father, so well, you according had that to them, masculine energy. According to them, yeah. But yeah, I think that I think that that that's what like yeah, I think that's like what the adult journey is, 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 a, is about like, okay, now I'm, 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 a, I'm grown, I'm functioning, I followed all the rules that I needed to to get where I am, but now it's like, but who am I? Like, that's, that's like such a universal, relatable thing, right? And, yeah. and how do, where do I fit in with myself? And then how does that person fit in with other people? Yeah, well, that last one is, is not in your control. That's 100%. The hard, I would, well, would say it's the hardest one, but it's actually the easy, it's nothing you have to do about it. Yep. Um, yeah, also back to the idea of men and women being different. Sorry, I said it. Uh, I do think that there are a lot more rules on the way women are supposed to be when they're younger. Yeah. Like you're supposed to, you know, you know, have huge tits and you're supposed to, you know, like cook. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also jokes aside, you're supposed to uh, submit yep. in a way. Um, which, yeah, I mean, I I often think about how much how i mean even if it's an obvious statement how the formative years how important that is for somebody i grew up so lucky right with just love and applause <laughs> you know yeah. <clears throat> and like that has built a big foundation of who i am and like if you're growing up and you're told that you can't do and you have to do and you have to be this way and that's not light lady like it's like yeah i mean how does that not affect you yeah it I mean, can't. You might grow it can't up and not. just dye your hair pink and lose your fucking mind. You know, you may that might happen. Uh-huh. You might throw yourself a birthday party <laughs> where you front a band and make people watch you play. Like that could happen. But I want to put up a picture here for uh, for uh, Lauren's thirtieth birthday. Was it? Thank you so much. Um, through a, a birthday party, you tell it. My dream was always like every comic wants to be a rock star. Every rock star wants to be a comedian. Like that old thing. I'm very happy where I am. You're great. Uh, but you're also musical. But yeah, I always wanted to be in a band. So for my birthday, I hired a band. I fronted the band and we put on a 
show of cover songs and a proper concert, not just a show. Proper concert because my dream was not to just be in a band because I can go join a band tomorrow, play at a dive bar for five people. Bragging. That's thank you, very successful. That's not what I was chasing. What I wanted to experience was feeling like I was a rock star, yeah. that I was throwing a concert for people who had paid for tickets you had that a wanted table. to be there. I made merch. It was all free. You didn't have to buy a ticket to get in, obviously. But what I did, I don't, know, only, I don't know if you know this. I had the band play without me for a few songs and then a video showed. Did I tell you this? Mm -mm. I had a video of me and it was basically setting my expectations, which is a, a, along the lines of what we've been talking about, where I said, hey, everybody, I'm so glad you're here. This is a video you made for the birthday party. Correct. That aired, that showed on a big right. screen right before band I played. Band playing, band stops. Right. Spotlight. Spotlight. <sighs> and it's like, I'm so glad that you're here. I want to let you know what I expect of you. Don't be a dud. I want to see you move. I want to see you dance. Video? Well, a minute and a half. I was going to say. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a clip. You send, we'll send a clip. Send a clip. We'll, we'll watch it there. Yeah. Uh, uh, I fade to black. Oh, hi, it's me, Lauren Ash, the birthday girl herself. And I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank all of you for coming tonight and joining me in celebrating my birthday. Now, I know what you're thinking. What exactly is about to happen? The answer is I'm about to live my own teenage dream of fronting a rock band and play a set of cover songs for you. And I know what else you're thinking. Okay, Lauren, well, what information do you need to impart to us via video before you take the stage? And that is something that's very simple. Don't be a dud. Yeah, I'm asking you to dig deep, to connect to the joy that I am going to feel tonight, the joy that you want for me to feel. And you are going to be engaged when you watch this set of music, cover songs you may or may not know, who cares? The point is this, I want you moving, I want you bopping, I want you as close to the stage as you can get. I don't want you to be a wet blanket in the back thinking you're too cool for school, because guess what, I promise you, you're not. And I know what you're thinking, Lauren, that's kind of a lot to ask, I've already shown up. And to that I say, is it a lot to ask? Because if you showed up for me tonight, chances are I've touched you in some way in the past, maybe made you feel some joy, gave you a giggle. And what I'm saying is the best gift you could give me is cheering loud, dancing hard, and acting. Even if you're not having a good time, acting like you are. Fake it till you make it strong and wrong, folks. This is the favor that you can give me. Think of it as though I'm 40 and this is my make-a-wish. In summation, I just want to thank you once again for being here. And now, please join me in welcoming me the star of the night. Now, if you'll excuse me. And what was amazing was because I can, because listen, because I was vulnerable and I said, hey, I'd really like you guys to show up for me in this way. Everybody did. Mm -hmm. The entire room was on fire. Everyone was <laughs> dancing. It was amazing. I came out on that stage. It was the greatest oh, night of my life. Great. It really was. Such but kid, again, you know? it's total, totally. But it really was. I do credit myself that I was like, I need to tell them what I expect of them. Mm -hmm. Because if I if you tell somebody, much like you said to me, hey, this is the thing I have about sense, right? Then I know moving forward, and I really made an effort today, and I hope that it isn't Great. overpowering. Great, that's nothing in the best way. Great. Um, Do that again, you put a mustache on? Thank great. Uh, but but that's because you communicated that to me, and I want to I wanna honor th uh, that as a friend. So in that same way, everyone in that room that night, because I said like, hey, and I, I you know, you can see it in the video, but it was like, I've obviously if you're here, You've, you've shown up for me. You care about me. Maybe I maybe I did something for you once that you appreciated. This is what your gift to me yeah, could be. Yeah, so now I'm going to need you to show up a little more. Exactly. And here's how you're going to do it. And they did. Because I asked. Yeah. That's nice. Love to ask for stuff. Got to ask for stuff. Gotta you got to set your boundaries, set your expectations. Ask for stuff. And, yeah. uh, and I like when other people ask for stuff. Just like if someone asks, I'm going to finish, where would you like me to do that? Yeah, that's complicated. That's complicated. Um, but yeah, I, I think I asked too. Yeah. I remember the first time I ever got a, um, I had oral sex done to me. Thank you. Um, the first time that the woman had also given oral sex. So oh, it was our first time. That's nice. We were each other's first kiss. That's sweet. Kiss so on I the dick. I have to imagine first, you know, kiss that as well. Kiss on the dick. Yeah. I never kissed anybody before, but I had sucked a lot of willies. <laughs> Um, and she's, she's doing her thing, you know, she's, sure. she's trying, bless her heart. Oh God. And, um, I, uh, I said, uh, cause I didn't know what to do, where, where, where to finish. Yeah. Um, and I asked her and she hadn't thought about it. So she yeah. goes, Oh, um, I guess I could get a towel. 
So she went upstairs. This was in the basement. And she got some paper towels. And she kind of ca- broke the momentum a little, I bet. You know, much <laughs> like when uh, Not Dead Yet does two weeks of, uh, uh, of uh, reruns for some sure, reason. Sure, sure. And now we got canceled. No. Or for- fortunately, it still got picked up. <laughs> um, and then she got the paper towels. And then she came down. And then uh, uh, I, I'm about to, you know, do my thing, as guys do. Sure. And then I, she gave me the paper towels. Uh, and then this was the only person I was with while I was with her. So for my first year and a half of um, doing these types of things, my experience was going in paper towels. And it, uh, I don't know if it's trauma, but it did then make me feel like I'm never supposed to go anywhere but in a towel. Uh, and I still, to this day, uh, uh, if I were ever to be fortunate enough to have a woman uh, who's funny Success, very successful, very successful. Mm-hmm. um you know uh those are the main two <laughs> um <laughs> uh do that to me yeah uh and i uh finish in in her mouth uh i laugh you laugh there's something about it when i say wrong i don't mean wrong in a sexual sense i don't mean like it's naughty or dirty or inappropriate i just it's just like i want i go i'm sorry like, I feel like I know I, I, I'm sorry. Some people, some people will do it and they don't love it. Some people will do it and they love it. Some people don't do it. Some people don't care. Yeah. It has nothing to do with their take. Um, uh, I just, I just admitted that I've had at least four other people do it. Wow. But, um, you know, you know what though? I love, I've always been so charmed by stories about people's like sexual beginnings because I feel like charmed. I have, yeah. <laughs> charmed, I'm sure. Yeah. I don't no, there's something charming to me that it's like then for a year I was always jizzed yeah. in a pipe paper towel like that's so sweet like I, <laughs> I, I, I really Isn't think that, that it's really lovely but it's also like the things that you grow up thinking are normal or the things right. that you and normal is again it's typical. A, you know, a typical thank you um you know and then you you like I just remember like hearing a friend once we were all in high school at the time and somebody was talking about like masturbating and and everyone was talking about like, well, you know, I use my my dominant hand or it's like, oh, I use the other hand, whatever. And mm-hmm. One of my buddies and I hope he doesn't watch this because I'm not I'm not trying to call him out. But I did find this so charming. He was like, I do a nest. And we were all like. What's a nest? He's like the nest, like building something. It, he block? would he would put together like a little nest of a like tissues or? and stuff. And then he would hump the nest until he finished hump what does that mean like what like you put it between two pillow cushions or something i don't do you know that you can't just put your penis into some tissues i think you can rick if you're like a 14 year old boy i don't know but where are the I tissues don't have the tiss- one. but where are the tissues like on a on a on it like yeah somewhere which also means i didn't i didn't dig in get about- him on the phone are you do you still know this person we'll change the voice do you know the person i do but no get we him can't. On the phone. i don't have his number legit i don't have his number i don't we're just like fa- find Facebook out Instagram friends. message. We'll also fade to black. We'll do a video of him. Oh doing my it. God. But anyway, it, what it what? But that was one of these moments where he wasn't feeling like he was being vulnerable because he thought that everybody, everybody uses the nest. But every, this is what was charming about me about this whole story was all of the rest of our friend group was watching him talk about this as though it was completely everyone does it. And we all went, of course, <laughs> we all we were like, no one wanted to call him out and tell him like, hey, man, no one else is doing the nest, bud. But, um, also, but someone could be someone could be a guy. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe the other guys around me were like, oh, shit. Yeah. The nest. nest. Yeah. The way he said nest, he either knew he made it up or he had heard it somewhere, which right. means he was aware that other people necessarily don't do it or right. he, other people. The nest. If he said, I ball up a bunch of tissues and I fuck it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it been, you know, more cash. But also equally as charming, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, that's funny. I never, I know, I, I didn't really think about that, 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 I mean, I, I say the word trauma comedically, but like, yeah. you know, that thing that sticks with me. Like, yeah, there were a few things that happened with my first girlfriend that took a while for me to recognize, oh, that was this person. Oh, that was right. me right. Uh, with this person. Right, yeah. Um, I talk about on stage, so I don't want to do it here. But like, I've talked about this too. But like, I didn't have my first kiss until I almost graduated high school. Right. So like, I bought a book. I was trying to learn how to do it, and I still have this. Um, the bit I do on on it is is about like the trauma of it. But like this this thing of like, for the longest time, I was because I didn't kiss a girl. 
until I was late because yeah. I was scared. Mm -hmm. uh, I project that all women will assume that if I don't kiss them, it's because I'm scared. I still feel that way, not logically, but I still have that feeling of not that they even want me to kiss them, but like assuming that they do or I feel that they do. I better do it. Right. Otherwise, if I don't, they're going to go home and tell everybody how much of a fucking loser I am, which isn't a thing. And right. if it is, what? Okay. Yeah. But like, it's not, it's not that thought out. It's just this thing like, I have to kiss them. And I don't want to because I don't want to yet. I don't know you. I don't want to yet. And I also don't know if you want to. I don't know if you kiss me back if you're just doing it because it would be awkward to not kiss me. Yeah. And I don't know. I can't say, did you want to do that? So like, even as an adult now, as, an, as a confident man, as a confident man who has been with, you know, uh, uh, other people before. Yep. Uh, it's so, it's scary. And the, the way I found around it is that direct thing of yeah. like, make bits out of it, I guess. But like saying like, I don't know, I don't know what the kissing situation is like, you know, like just having that conversation. And, uh, uh, some women find it to be a turnoff. Interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. I I don't know that I would. I think that that first kisses are so Yeah, the all the things that you're talking about. There's so much like energy around it if that makes sense at times. I remember there was a date I went on. This was a long time ago and he was lovely. This is not me trying to slam this person. I, I've been holding but, for a while. I I got to go pee. Go. Are you okay with time? Yeah. What time is it? Yes. 58 minutes later. So there was this guy I went on a date with. This was a while ago and he was lovely. This is not, I'm not trying to like call him out, but just along this topic, we went on this date. Did I feel like it was like sparks flying? No, but I'm also someone that like, I'll give almost anyone a second date if, <laughs> if, if, if it feels like, if I'll give almost anyone a second date, if it feels safe, like if it yeah, feels yeah. like it's a safe person, because I think first dates, there's so much pressure and you know what I mean? So it's uh -huh. like, as long as you aren't like outwardly offensive or, you know. Oh. <laughs> outwardly offensive? <laughs> Have you experienced that before? Oh God, yeah. I am sorry. Um, but anyway, so we get to the end of this date and he's, he's dropping me home and we kiss goodnight. Nice. And I thought it was fine. No mm -hmm. problem. Right. He sends me a message the next day that says, Did you come? <laughs> that says, where would you like me to finish? Uh, no, he sends me a message the next day that says, can we talk about the lack of passion in that goodnight kiss? Okay, I already know what that means. And maybe you're hearing it different. Oh. He's feeling he didn't give you a good kiss and he wants to acknowledge it. Not that you did anything. Interesting. Interesting. I want to tell you, I know I have a pimple here. I just want to let you know I know. I haven't noticed it. That's what I'm saying he did. That's ah. what I think he did. Wow, that was good acting because I really thought you were also just doing an aside. Yep, tip it. Um, well, we got into a conversation where it didn't appear that that was his intention. Okay. Um, and it was more just like, I don't think that this is going to work because the kiss wasn't passionate enough. But maybe perhaps the subtext was exactly what you're saying. Either way. Um, Either way. Excuse me. Do you fart? Always. <laughs> editing so i sent him a message and i was basically like you know for me i i didn't really put that much weight on that first kiss i thought that it was fine and that there's got to be room Is to grow you said? yeah listen man i didn't put that much weight on it okay so i don't know what you're talking about it wasn't in that tone uh but again it was like oh okay wow he, he was basically he, the way he communicated to me was like it didn't feel like there was a spark there so i don't think this is going to go anywhere okay and I think that's a shame. Yeah. I think that you got to give it another go. Unless it's, out, again, unless it's outwardly offensive. Unless I've bitten your tongue off. If I'm not into somebody, and I could be wrong because I could be into him if, I have a, if we had a second date. Could be. I probably won't. You probably won't what? Have a second date. That's fair. But then I don't think you need to send the message saying there was no passion in that goodnight kiss. Then I can think you just say, I don't think this is going to work out. Aren't you curious why? No. I would be. I don't care anymore. <laughs> right. I, I truly don't. I, I'm like, caring. cool. Yeah. I bye. Get it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to, to, to assume, I mean, was it a, or was it a makeout? It was a makeout. Gotcha. How long was the makeout? 
20 seconds. So it was just a little make out. Little make out. By the door? By the door. Standing. Standing. Can't tell from a standing door kiss. Right? You can't. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you can't. You can't tell. You need to have another go at it. Yeah. Also, to not acknowledge the reality that even if you don't feel nervous, she might or he might. And or feeling like you need to do a certain thing or like, I want her to feel that I'm passionate, but I don't know if I should throw her up against the door. I just met her. How much tongue am I supposed to use? I want her to know that I'm a, a, I'm a present kisser, but I also don't want her to think I'm going to take charge entirely. Whatever the right or wrong may be, if there even is one, you're not present. Thank you. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly it. I say before I kiss or sleep with any person, I say, I'm going to be really bad at this the first three times. And I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. And by the fourth time, I'm going to still be bad. And I'm sorry, I'm not good at this. Do you want to go on another date? <laughs> and again, charming. Yeah. Charming. I like to fuck nests. Ring doorbells, nests. Mm -hmm. That's what I was picturing when you first said nests. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Different word now. Do you think that he, he was lying and it was passionate, but he just felt you were too funny? <laughs> I'm very successful. Uh, maybe. Do you ever dim down? Like, you know, you talk about when you're first dating, you sometimes we maybe even subconsciously don't reveal all the parts of ourselves. I did for years. What did that look like? Uh, laughing too hard at things that aren't funny. Oh, dimming down was less about being you less funny, but bring them up. Yep. And laughing is going to, you think they believed the laugh? A hundred percent. Huh. Could you give me an example? Could, could you, can I say something? Give me something. To, um, uh, <laughs> sorry. What? No, that was just, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> um, I haven't even done it yet. I know. I know. That was it. Let me explain what just happened mm -hmm. and how much I hate it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know that was it. I know that was it. You're a good actor though, Rick. Sometimes I don't know. I need but, you to but, know that but, I know. But that's the thing. I'm sorry. See, this is gonna, this feels like it, now there's a there's a rift in our friendship. That's what that felt like. That. Let me acknowledge that. I am playfully annoyed there's okay. no rift all right we are different people okay. obviously and we play the way we play but what i'm saying is the game wasn't even assumed we set up the game because your reaction was so good i thought i thought you yeah. know what it is you know what it is i thought i got him i thought that i tricked you like that's, I thought that you didn't know it was the bit. Listen, I, it was my own ego. I was just, I was that's proud. That's what I'm calling an proud. insecurity. I was proud of the joke. But, but if you are playing a game of basketball and you hit a beautiful three point bucket, yeah, be proud, but then get back on D. Okay. You know what? <laughs> All I'm trying to do is get on D. Okay. That was the whole thing I was trying to Please show you. Please don't refer you. to that as my, as my fucking, I hate that. I can't remember the word pocket. You're talking about D as in D, 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 D? Yeah. Um, so that game was going to be really, here's, here's where the, the, the faux annoyance comes from. Yeah. The annoyance. The game is set. We put the quarters in the machine. It's go time. I guess I didn't want to stay in the bit. Bullshit. <laughs> okay. Bullshit. You, I was proud of myself that I thought that I, I thought that I, I thought it was like a, yes. it was like a who's on first moment uh, absolutely. for me. Absolutely. Yes. And it was because it was working. Whether right. I knew it or not, it was working. Right. Then why stop? Because I felt like I had done what I needed to do. Wrong. Because no, you know what? I believe this you. Is, what I love is that you're mansplaining to me what my own No, no, I agree with you. I, 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 I'm saying by wrong, I don't mean you're wrong. I'm sorry. That's the wrong mentality. Or should I say woman mentality? Because it's wrong. Here's the thing. You felt like you did what you needed to do, right? Yeah. Did you consider the fact that I want to play some beats? Did you consider the fact that maybe I didn't want to be a dancing monkey no, and doing the bit for you? No, no. Since you were seven, you wanted to be a dancing monkey. That's not true. That's not what it was. I wanted to be on camera. I said nothing about monkeying. Well, here we are. Here we are, <laughs> monkeying around. All right, I, before this gets too below the line. Of course. And you can keep this in, even though this makes me look bad. But listen, let's show ourselves. Here I Honesty, am. Honesty, authenticity, vulnerability. What happened was, here's what, and you already told me. So tell me if I'm wrong here. But what happened was, you didn't know that I knew you were doing the bit. So you called it out. Yes, but. Right. Oh, is that what you learned in improv? 
to yes, but. See, but my instinct now is to just tell you that you're right so it can be over because I don't want to keep doing this. We can stop. No, no, it's okay. I'm just saying that's what my instinct is. But the truth is, is there was a part of it that I was like, we don't have to sit in this bit this long. It was not long. I know, but I was like, I didn't know that I wanted to keep going. Okay. You hate it so much. And, and all of your beloved listeners and viewers are going to hate me after oh, this. Oh, no, no, no. This is, even, if, 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 if this is the first episode they've seen, um, they see this, that this guy fucking is gross. But <laughs> they will, most of these people have seen me before. So I think they might just think, yeah, Rick does that. Oh, There's, sure. This, I am. You're, you've got a creepy uncle vibe now. No. No, I mean that in a lovable sense. Yes. Yeah. That you know what I mean? That it's like, ah, he does he doesn't mean any harm. That's just that's just uh that's just Uncle Bob, Uncle Buck. Yeah, that's a nice way of saying it. Okay, I don't, I'm I, sorry. I didn't mean creepy uncle. There's a connotation there. The Uncle Buck vibe. No, I'm saying is I don't even think they're gonna be that nice to me. I think they're oh. gonna be like, Rick, just fucking drop it. I see. Um, so there's obviously something there. And yeah. I, that's why I like talking about Let's it. Let's talk about the lack of passion in this bit. There are so many layers that's hap that happened. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, did you just hide a yawn? Nope. Okay. I was hiding a laugh. Okay. Because um, I wanted to say that I was proud of a callback. Okay. Listen, are you constantly psychoanalyzing me and my approach to bits? Yeah. Now I'm realizing it. Because what I wanted to say that moment was that was a callback because you didn't acknowledge it. And then I was like, don't acknowledge it. What was it. the callback? See, the one time I I'm right. I didn't, I didn't hear it. Tell the me. The one time I'm Tell right. Tell me the callback. I said there was a lack of passion in that bit, which was a callback oh, to yes. the lack of passion yes, in the goodnight yeah. kiss. And I wanted, and again, I was like, let it go. He, he knows everything. He sees everything. You know what? You know what I, I'm noticing with What's you? What's that? You're not really doing the bit for you. No. Which is sometimes. the opposite of what you said. I did what I needed to. Right. Why is that the opposite? Isn't that the same? Because doing what you need to is for you. But where the passion bit. That's not true. I was did it for, for, for me? Was it for the audience? It was for you then how come you didn't let me play in it? Um, Because I felt like that was the compromise. Compromise. Right. What compromise? I'll do the bit with you for a, for a, for a second. But I didn't I get to play any beat. I was about to, I was about, you were saying the game was that I, like like a woman saying that I no, nobody, I could fake an orgasm and mm -hmm. all right, show it to me. And then we see the woman fake the orgasm and then we get to either see the man believe it or not believe it. I guess because I didn't really feel like it made me look very becoming. So I was like, I don't really want to sit in this that long because then it's going to make me look like I'm a lying, manipulative person who's pretending go. to laugh at jokes. I'm glad we got it out. <laughs> Insecurity, like I said. Okay, okay. <laughs> sure. Yep. Because I, there's a, there's, a, there's a type of play that you so offer me. And I mean that in, in, in like, not the, yeah, I just mean it. Like there are certain people that I get to play a certain way with. Sure. You're one of these people. Yeah. Um, my buddy John DeWalt is one of these people. Andrew Santino is one of these people. Uh, there, there are some other ones, but those two come to mind very much, which is the 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 growing up with 90s sitcoms. Yeah. And you know how to play this game. Something that John and I love to do. Loved, I love it. Um, maybe John does. Um, they've redone Jurassic Park ride at Universal Studios. But the way it was, and it still kind of is, is you go through all this stuff and it's suspenseful and there's, uh, but it's all fine. It's all good and fine. And then you go up the, the thing and then, Oh, it's scary. And then you're about to go over and you realize, oh, we're good. And at the last second, this big Tyrannosaurus Rex comes, ah, and then you fall down and then we're scared, right? We know that's coming. We know the game. Mm -hmm. We get it. Now, the way we like to play in that growing up from these multi-cam, very divisive jokes and like things not being that realistic, we'll go through and be a little scared. And as we're going up the thing, we go, oh, well, that wasn't too bad. Yeah, I guess we're through the thick of it. That's kind of the end of it now. Well, there's nothing nothing to be scared of here. And then the thing comes. Just very on the nose. Right. I love playing that because it has that device that worked back then, but the ironic layer now. And we know how to live in that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So what just happened with this game was I felt this kid in me being able to play this. We all know what the game is. We literally said it. They know it. I know it. You know it. We all know it. Now we get... The hard work is done. We met somebody who wants to play. I want to play. Here are the rules. So now we get to do it. Right. And we're doing it and you're doing it. And I am doing it very believably. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute. Did we even start doing it yet? And I am now, get to, I get to play the game. I get to do the thing where I then get to say to you, no, I will always know it's fake. And then, oh, I get to believe it. 
and I didn't get to play the game. So I guess what's my trigger? I felt like a kid who was his toy was taken away. <laughs> well, I apologize that that no, was that no, painful no. for you. I guess for me as a woman being told, being asked a question of what of the things I've done to please men in the past, and then I was doing something to please a man in the moment. In the moment, I guess maybe it was like I was happy to throw in the towel, maybe before you <laughs> didn't get your needs met. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Was it that hard? Let no. me play too. Okay. You know what? Instead of where do you want me to finish? How about you just let me? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're right. I think you're I right. nailed that dismount. It was really beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that is something true that I haven't really articulated before. Like, that's what we were talking about before about the me not laughing at you, for yeah. example. Me laughing at you is similar to you ending it. It ends it. Right. So, yeah, there is this kid that's like, I don't want the game. I don't get to play that much. You know, I mean, I don't know if that's necessarily true, but that's the feeling. Like, I want, like, I, I value this play so much that stay in it. Right. And that ends up coming into committing to things and people not knowing if you're joking or serious and all that right. double-edged sword shit. But like when I'm on the same page with somebody, when we went to the game with you and your friend Anessa, yeah. I was a little stoned. Yep. It was fucking multi-cam city. Oh, yeah. I had such a good time. Yes. And the bits, they, you know what I'm saying? Yep. So there also is this thing that I think I project on you that we're exactly the same. Yes. <laughs> yes. I think that that is true. I Which I know true. isn't the case because men and women are different, Rick. But yeah, but 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 I am being serious when I say that there is something I pro I project on people that play the way I do. Yes, that you realize they play the way you do in certain pockets at certain times, but they are very much their own different comedic person. Yes, but I have projected on you, and I'm now becoming aware of this. I have projected on you, like no, I know how to play with you. I know what we're doing. Right. I've met you before. Right. You know, and in a great way, in yeah. a way that there is this thing. But also like, no, we don't really know each other that much. And if she doesn't want to play the game, I don't need to yell at her. <laughs> <laughs> so I too am sorry. Listen, that's okay. It's all right. <laughs> Man, if people are listening to this still, I'm so glad this is at the end of the podcast. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Listen, I mean, on our podcast, listeners dip off. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. I think if there is anybody still, do you know I did a test once? At the very end of an episode, I said, if, if you've, you've listened this, to this point, Say. Respond with this word and nothing else. Uh, all right. So if you listen to this par part, uh, comment something like Lauren is wrong for doing that or Lauren <laughs> fucked up. No, no, no. Well, no I'm just I saying if they that's... listen, if they listen. Uh, yeah, and if you I haven't that's... gotten to this point, say Lauren is the best. Well, then they, well, no. They... That way it's fair. I think maybe just comment something. Uh... First base. This is just. See, this is fun again. <laughs> That's why. Why are we so afraid of confrontation? Why are we so afraid of being uncomfortable? The other person fucking iron it out, man. And trust that the other person is strong enough to, to, to be able to iron it out, too. Yeah. Or say my instinct is to say you're right and leave it and then trust that I'll say, OK. And then you go, no, 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 I'll keep going. And I'll go, OK. Yep. Because so? now we're stronger than, than yesterday. yesterday. Now there's nothing that I'm away. My loneliness ain't killing me no more. I, I, stronger. Is there anything you want to plug? I have a podcast called True Crime and Cocktails, and I also am on a show called Not Dead Yet with You. A great show. I, I really, it's too bad we can't do more. Great show. It's, I'm so excited that we get to do more. I hope we have more scenes together. I want you to leave all of these with none well, of the edits. Of course they're staying in. Okay. <laughs> I didn't mean that in a way. No, that, I guess not. I get that. Now I'm all self-conscious that I'm like, Ugh, oh, you know what I mean? I'm, you know what? I'm sorry. No, it's fine. It's, it's, Can I explain what the of course meant? No, it's all right. Okay. What I could have said was, absolutely, I agree, <laughs> is what I meant. Like, yeah. of course, like, of no course. brainer. That's the best. That yeah. is the best way to do it. Absolutely. Um. But just be better. Yeah, you know what? I've learned a lot. <laughs> Same. Same. I've learned that men are, uh, men suck. Didn't say that. Love men. Love men. I've, I, I, listen, okay, if there's okay, nothing okay, else okay. I leave here, okay? Trust me. Okay. Trust me. What do you we'll love? love what do you love about men so much? <laughs> um, there's, I, I mean, oh God. There's, no, there's a list. I have a list and it's, it's. Are you being serious? Deep. Uh, now you're asking me. Yeah. Oh, how the tables have turned. If I don't know, I'm going to ask. The fact that you didn't know is what is fucking insulting. I'm kidding. I know. No, but do you really have a list of men? Things you like about men? 
Well, um, you're talking about men. I'm going to talk. I'm going to eat my go men go. Eat your go men go. Yeah, you know, I like. There's things that I like about people. I think. Tell and me about men. Tell me what you like about men. They're dicks, Rick. I love the dick. That's okay. the truth. What do you like about it, and how important is size versus how they use it, and what's the difference? <laughs> this is what he's been waiting for this entire time. This is the entire time. Um, yeah, I think if I didn't like dick, then I probably wouldn't date men. I think that that's the truth. You heard it here first. <laughs> You want to get the tabloids? Check this out. Check it out. Lauren Ash, star of Not Dead Yet, says Whoa, she loves dick. Dick, 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 dick. <laughs> What's your favorite kind of dick? What color? Oh, I, I'm an equal opportunist. Truly. Is there, out of all the dicks you've had? Yeah. And I'm sure Not that plenty. many. What's the mean? Like the, the most, if you categorize it by color of dick, <laughs> which one has the most? White? Well, white, what do you mean white? Like there's no powder white dick. Like they all have a they all have a shade to them. Lauren, you it's know like what white even means. Even clean balls Lauren, smell. You know what white means. Grow up. <laughs> out of let's say a hundred penises you've had, out of and we'll do that from percentage points. Have there been more penises of a certain color than white? Probably. Probably not. But so you prefer white. I don't say that I prefer it. I, well, just I know haven't... you're not saying it, but yeah. you're definitely fucking that way. Cold open. <laughs> <laughs> and just, just the deflating. <sighs> <laughs> Got a little mango in my teeth. You yeah, know what it's I mean? sticky. It's sticky. Yeah. yeah. Um, nothing wrong with white dick. One of my best friends is a white dick. Is it John DeWalt? You keep <laughs> referencing him, claiming he wasn't in a class with me. I'm, is he a tall guy, blonde hair? Is he a black man? Just told you he's got a white dick, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> First base. Come on. Um, no, he's not tall. Uh, he's not short. I don't know. I'm making this number. You're up. tall though. Yeah. You're, so you have no. You're your frame Would of you reference. Would you say someone is who's five ten is tall? No. He's probably five ten. Okay, not tall then. Yeah, dark hair. Average heighted. Yeah. Okay. That's how you use it. <laughs> 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 I'm Lauren. Oh boy. I mean, if you're gonna do an impression, then just make it grounded. Sure, make sure, it grounded. Sure, how about this? Um I was joking. Okay. I, I was joking. Okay, you know what? This is what I hate about that. Anti-Semitic. Clip it. I can't. <laughs> I can't. No, do me. Do me. I'm sorry. This is what I hate about that though. I, I am a boy that wants to play with a toy and you, the woman on the other couch, is the toy for me today. And if you don't do exactly what I want, I'm going to get mad about it. Uh, I love dicks. I love white dicks. I'm Lord. I love white dicks. Uh, you could finish wherever you want. I never said that. Yeah. I said, please ask. I never said that. Well. Now you get it. Doesn't feel good to be a man, does it? Doesn't feel good to be a woman, does it? Ugh. That's such an unfair thing to say. Yep, it is. That's because what now, it's you're, like. now you're speaking for other women saying that they shouldn't feel good being a woman. If you've watched this far in the podcast, respond in the comments saying Lauren has uh Lauren loves women. white dicks. No, that's not it. And go women. And <laughs> <laughs> go women go. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you want to plug your podcast? Yep. Take your shoes oh, off. <laughs> my podcast, True Crime and Cocktails. Right. I already mentioned it. Yep. This Anything is from else? the merch store. Um, I'm in a band. Stay tuned for that. And I'm on Instagram at Lauren Elizabeth Ash. I think that's the only one that matters these days. Instagram? Yeah. And I'm on TikTok too. You do TikTok? Do you <laughs> I, do TikTok? I mean. I you, like TikTok. Yeah, so. But that, it may not exist anymore by the time this airs. It'll exist. Much huh? like our show. It'll exist. Unlike our show. I think there's a good chance we won't even know by the time this comes out. Yep. What is your guess? We know by beginning, middle of May. Contractually, we have to know in May. Yeah. Middle? Yeah, I think so. I think this will come out first week of May. I'll allow it. <laughs> you're such a funny woman. Oh, I think you're a funny person. I want to end this the way we started by acknowledging the truth of how important women are. So before we get out of here, could you talk about some of the beautiful things about women and celebrating them? No. Scoot-doo. Blabbity blue.